Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the What's in My Head podcast today. He got mad the last time I said it, not Tony himself, but a fan on there. He says, it's fucking Eddie again, man. Tony, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Oh, dude, I, I was, we were talking just a second ago, man. I got to tell you, when you reach back out after the episode, before we even get to that, thank you for doing the last episode, because if it wasn't for you guys, let me turn this down off. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have been able to hit our first goal at 2,000 subscribers right oh you got 2,000 subscribers i'm like 3,100 right now man and it's all yeah. because of you guys's episode that video oh, cool. I don't know the last time you looked at it man but that's sitting at 105,000 views 100 oh, cool in 20 or fucking two months man it's crazy um for you guys that's that's listening, that don't know man it's tony uh you know eddie from ed ed and eddie among so many other things um yeah like i said when you reach back out after that episode dropped I was surprised. I was shocked because one, it was like you were the hot chick I was chasing, right? I, I had to get Eddie on. I had to get him. Like, how did it, how does it happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's fantastic, man. There's no real, we don't have a plot or we don't have a storyline that we're going to go through. So whatever happens, happens, man. I guess we're going to take it back to the beginning and see where, you know, it all started for you, man. But how did little Tony Sampson get into the Hollywood business? Oh, <laughs> You know, I guess it's your typical monkey horror story. And not like scary movie, but like horror. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> if I said it right. Yeah, I said it right. Horror. Yeah, I tripped, fell, and landed on the dick, so to say. I don't know, man. Honestly, it was kind of a fluke. Um, one of my buddies did some commercial or some shit. And then I just was like, oh, yeah, sounds cool. And then I went in and Ta-da. Kind of just happened. Rest is history, I, I, don't, say. I don't know, right? And then, uh, yeah, like I said, I just went in and it just kind of happened. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really, I didn't know what I was doing or nothing. I had no idea, you know? And then I just went for auditions and started getting stuff. And, you know, I mean, Eddie was down for way further down the way, but like, I think my one of my first voice acting ones was, um, geez, I don't even know. My Little Pony was way back when. And, there was like uh, Mega Man. Yeah. Way back when. Like, there was lots of anime stuff way back when, you know, and I thought it was cool. It was fun, you know, going here, screaming at the mic, energy, energy, bah! and, you know, I mean, I don't know. And then, yeah. It, it's it's yeah, wild when you sit there and think about it because, like I said, I knew you from Eddie, right? Like most people. Do. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to say that's probably your biggest role, correct? I mean, is it safe to say? I would say probably the one with the most viewership. Yeah, I mean, Ed, Ed, Eddie was pretty friggin' big, wasn't it? I mean, especially down here in the States. Now, I've never been to Canada. I've seen the shores of Canada when I was stationed in Washington State. I've always wanted to go. So hopefully one day I can actually get up there to the Great No, I don't, it never, it didn't play in Canada. That's the thing. So like, uh, it's crazy, right? I, yeah, it wasn't on TV here or anything. So like, it was easy here. Like, nobody ever heard of it. You know, it's not like I would go out and people would be like, oh, you're yeah, Eddie. I mean, you look at this guy with his Eddie voice. No, and it never happened like that, right? So, like, it was it was pretty it was pretty chill here for that. I don't smoke anymore. I know I was, like, busting out the cigs left, but I'm on the beach now, man. Well, that, that was what was funny because you, you're sitting there, and then you just, like, you get up, and I'm like, what's, what's going on? Is he going to drop the mic or drop the phone? What's going to happen? And then you just smoke uh, a cigarette. That was one yeah, of the most the metal fucking things I have ever seen in my life. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to sit on my phone smoke a cigarette for a little bit it was dope i got so many comments just specifically off that like tony oh because i go and freaking yeah choke back some cigarettes yeah so man, yeah. i'm glad you quit smoking man i'm, I'm yeah i'm, I'm off the cancers well at least that that cigarettes are they're all bad i guess i don't know but apparently this isn't as bad for you yeah so and it tastes better and i don't smell like a dirty ashtray just strawberries now so <laughs> You know, if you smell my breath, it's like, oh, look, strawberries. So yeah. much nicer. That's fucking fantastic. I don't know why that, that sound keeps happening. I think I got some. I don't know. It's a ding dong. It's not me. I don't think. Let me see. No, nope, not me. Not me ding donging. It was, it was for sure me. No worries. I just closed it out. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, I can't wait to get the comments on that one. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, like I said, man, look at it. Was it wasn't my ding dong. No, it was mine for sure. Speaking of ding dongs, man, when we opened the show the last time, we were talking oh, yeah, about a the- huge oh. dick. <laughs> I've never had, like, like I told everybody on that, that episode, I have never had my face hurt from laughing so much. It looked like you guys had never missed a beat. Like you guys just picked up where you left off the last time you all three were together. It was, 
magic if yeah. if i can say that word and a lot of people <laughs> magic, you know uh yeah. we did spend a lot of time together yeah, that's an understatement man like i said it yeah. felt like you guys were more than just friends man because like i said you guys garnered you know garnered that that family s mentality with ak and the voice actors and actresses and all that other stuff oh yeah i mean me me matt and sam are on a different level for sure you know like i love those guys like brothers like not like yo bro but like actually like you know like they were like my brothers you know what i mean like family kind of thing you know all that you know, because we gave it to each other and everything else. You know what I mean? But yeah, like I, like I said, I love those guys. That's fantastic. That's why that's why I came back and did it, right? Because they were going to be there, yeah. There were so many people that's like, man, Tony didn't look like you wanted to be there. I'm like, well, I mean, he, the only reason he did it was because of Sam and Matt. And I, I, I also, like, like, just came off my second in a row 15-hour night shift. That's what I told so, like, you. I worked 15-hour night shift, stayed up for four hours past the night shift, did the podcast, then went back to sleep and went back in another night shift. You know what I mean? So, like, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have been there if I didn't want to be. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's that's not right. really my style, right? I don't really kind of do things just because. That, that's the one sense. thing that I completely admire about you because there's so many people, not so much in this industry, uh, uh, you know, just Hollywood and all that other stuff that, that are – metaphorically they're a puppet right somebody's got their hand in their ass and somebody's making their mouth do this so you go in and, <laughs> you go and say yeah. things that people think they that, that you want to be saying or you want to be well, yeah like that. especially yeah. nowadays with the whole like cancel thing you know it's like be careful what you can say you may they make you mad and then well now you can't do it no more man that lady over there doesn't like you when you say fuck right you know it's a bad word and now, like, her arm's going to fall off because she was upset by it. You know, like I always say, like, the people, you know, like, if you don't like the word fuck, just pretend that, like, um, I said rainbow or puppy. And then every time the word fuck or something else comes up that you find offensive, just insert rainbow or puppy. And then everyone's happy and, you know, nobody's arms fall off from being offended. Man, you would think so because it, it, it never... It never makes sense to me because I, I think of words like that, like fuck or cunt or stuff like that, right? It's, Ooh, it's yeah, fuck. that one. Oh, man, it's the second one, though. That, that, the the C one. Yeah, it depends on how the you The C one, that's okay to say to one of your buddies. Uh, but you well, can't say that to your mom. No, I, I mean. Or your, or your, your girlfriend. girlfriend. Did you ever hear your mom say cunt? Have you ever heard her say it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's but, fantastic. <laughs> but that's some serious business. Yeah. You, know that, you know that person did some shit. Yeah, you go to zero to one hundred you know, real quick. Yeah, that's what I mean. But like, I can say, I can say to you, "Oh, you silly cunt," but I can't say that, you know, to like my grandma. You know, like it depends. There's those, those different ones, you know. But that, I guess that comes down to the respect part of it, right? Yeah, I don't know. You got to play it's the so touchy. It's so touchy with words, you know. I don't understand it, man. It's it's like the salt and pepper of language, really. When you sit there and you throw in ice and shit up, throw it out there, see what happens, set the mood type of thing. I like it. Most people don't, but. To each their own type of thing, you know? Dude, I can't even think of, like, there's no word that would have make me go, oh, my God. I can't believe you said that. Oh, my God. What are you going to happen? Nothing's going to happen at all. Everyone's fine. There's no bullets. Someone just said, fuck, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that it, somebody... I don't know how many times I saw like that ruined my childhood hearing these guys talk like that. But let's let I don't want to talk about these negative people, man. Because like ah, I said, yes, no more of that. Yeah, because like I no said, no more. We we did something, and by we I mean I just sat in here like a fly on the wall and just let you guys go as much as you wanted to go on that last one. So like I said, I had fun a well, lot. I thought, of you, were, I thought you were pretty funny, man. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, funny looking for sure. But nonetheless, man, I try to get my little jokes in there when I can. But I was just so amazed, like I said, seeing you guys play back on forth. But we're here talking you're about talking dog story. You're like, I was so base. Oh, the dog was talking to me. Like that would fuck with your head. Dude, I you know, like that. anybody who's ever been like that high <laughs> gets it. You know what I mean? Like when you were telling that story, I was like, shit, dude, I've been there where you're like, did that coach just say that? And one of your buddies comes in like, yo, what's the matter with you? And you're like, oh, shit, that was you. I thought that coach was talking to me, man. Like, wow. Did, did I bring up the X when I thought I was an X-Men the first time I ever smoked weed story? No. You okay. thought you were an X-Men? Yeah, right. So it, I, can tell, 
I can but, tell you the experience. Did you have? Uh, well, I thought I could breathe underwater, but here, let me let me set the stage. So the first time I ever smoked weed was July 4th, 2016. It was a couple yeah. months after I got out of the Navy. So we're coming up on my five year anniversary of smoking weed here pretty soon. And uh, I was over, I was over a friend's house and uh, they were like, hey, you want to smoke weed? And I'm like, absolutely. I've never done it before. <laughs> right. So nine of us go into a little bathroom and they start passing around all of these different kinds of treats between cookies and brownies to joints, oh. to vaporizers, to try this because it elevates the high and all this other stuff. Needless to say, these fuckers got me so blitzed. I was so barbecued. Like I could not. Your face is like hanging. Yeah. Right. You're so, so big. You zips the cat. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't know what was going on, right? So we watched the fireworks go off. It's Fourth of July. You get the fireworks going off. All, oh shit! Hit that fireworks yeah. going off all over the place. And uh, my wife's driving home, and we're on a dark road. There's no light whatsoever, right? And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, "Oh shit! I don't have to breathe conventionally. I'm not breathing through my nose. I'm not breathing through my mouth." What I didn't realize, <laughs> was I had quit breathing, and I was like, "Holy shit! I'm an X man. I'm absorbing air through my skin, right?" So I'm like, "Oh fuck!" dude, I'm going to be the next whatever X-Men this is, right? And then I started getting paranoid because that's what weed does when you when you do too much, especially for your first fucking time. And they're throwing you out there with brownies, cookies, joints, blunts, and all this other crazy shit, right? And they start freaking out and panicking. I'm like, oh, what if they find out that my superpower is breathing through my skin and they throw me in through a lake? If they throw me in a lake, I'm going to absorb the water in my skin. I'm going to drown because I can't breathe because I'm breathing in through my skin and there's fucking water. So I didn't realize that I had quit breathing, right? That's so, what I was gonna say. When did you realize that you stopped breathing? You're like, I'm gonna pass out. When I when I started oh, passing out, I'm like, oh, oh, powers oh. aren't working. Yeah, <laughs> I, start, I start blacking out, right? And my wife was talking yeah. the entire time. I didn't realize she was talking. So she's driving, and I'm gonna to step back just so I don't blow everybody's eardrums. But I go, <gasps> scared the shit out of her. She swerved. We almost went off the road and shit, right? And she's like, what the fuck was that for? And I told her the same story I just told you. So yes, the first time I ever smoked weed, I thought I was an X Man. That's how fucked up they got me. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been an up. So that was five years ago? Yeah, almost, like three years to the oh, date wow. here, just in a couple of days, man. So I was. Uh, uh, dude, I think I, I'm from like, Surrey, BC. So, like, I think I smoked weed when I was like 12, I think, for the first time. That's just like what we grew up with. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was just like, but when, 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 we, when we grew up, it was just like everywhere. Yeah. So it wasn't like this thing. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like this huge stigma or, you know, like nobody was like, doing like you know you do it you'd be like oh wow that was messed up it's like not something that you would do for a while like no one was like weed heads you know what i mean but then again i don't i don't know if there's really such thing as someone being like you know you my weed dicks, you, know? <laughs> you know what i mean so like yeah like it was always around but i mean i think i think i mean i think the states is totally different than it's been like especially up here in like bc canada i think we like without it actually being legal it was about as legal as it could be yeah you know what I mean? Like, there have been times where we got caught with the cops, and the cops are like, "What's this?" And you tell them, and they're like, "Okay, we'll get rid of it." And you get rid of it, and they're like, "Okay, go." You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. in the states, they're like, "What's this, man?" You got like a little roach, and they're like, "Life and death." <laughs> you're gonna ruin the world, dude. You're under arrest, and you're going to jail for like five years or longer. You know, and they're beating the crap out of you in the back of the cop car, and you're like, "It's not my roach." So it's like a totally different animal. I don't know, it might be different in different states, but I know that over the years it's been pretty hardcore with you guys, hasn't it? Oh man, it is it is ever since the 80s when Nancy Reagan, which was Ronald Reagan's wife, came on and said, yeah. just say no. That whole just say no. And I was a part of that same that same era coming up through Dare. I don't know if you guys had Dare. Well, say no to like booze, coke, heroin, math is real, not good. Yeah. Uh, Heroin is not good. Cocaine is not good. But like weed, truth, you know, like all that stuff. I mean, I've never heard of a mushroom head. Yeah. I mean, have you ever met someone who is like addicted to magic mushrooms? Where they're like, dude, man, you ain't fucking foods, man. No, it's like, come on. Crack or heroin that I've noticed that people really start jonesing for, you yeah, know? Or meth. Or meth. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people get like, yeah. But like, I've never even met a single person. I've never even heard anybody really ask for mushrooms. You know what I mean? Let alone someone getting, you know, it's one of those things where if you do it, you don't want to do it again for a while because you're like trying to figure out what the hell just happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you need a break. You need to really digest what's wrong with you on the inside because you got all like, wow, what? 
why would I say something like that to that guy 15 years ago? That was pretty messed up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you're very introspective, you know? And then you're like, the depression goes away a little bit, you know? I share methods with some people. I'm just saying it's not like, it's not like an addiction, you know, like with like alcohol, you know, like where people just cannot stop, right? Physical dependency. Yeah, they don't have that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've never really had like, I can't really talk about it. Like for as far as like weed goes with, I guess some people, everything affects everybody differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just talking about like with my experience, like weed and shrooms. I know lots of people smoke weed every day, but really is that a problem? Like I guess if they're sitting around, people that I know that smoke weed every day, they're like, they wake up, they smoke weed and they go like live their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they go and they do stuff or they're farming or they're, you know, doing things. They're not just sitting on the couch smoking weed watching rick and morty all day going ah, this is my day, man. they're actually like doing things where like anybody i've known who's into like um alcoholism or you know all of the other ones it like you know like ah, the beast that really controls the life so that's why i never understood the whole illegality of it like is, is it is weed legal in the states now everywhere uh, yes and no. Like each state is different. So it's still illegal at the federal level, right? So you can still mm. go to it. Like for Florida, I've got my medical card so I can go and get, you know, whatever I want as long as it's within, you know, the certain doses. I go to dispensaries and all this other shit. Some yeah, states, so basically it's legal, basically. Yes, and it's, it's legal at the local level. It's, it's still illegal at the federal level. So you could still get popped for it, and it, but each state varies. So there's states that okay. are like Washington State and California where it's completely legal recreational. And then you've got places like Colorado that I, I don't know if they have legalized magic mushrooms or psilocybin. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that they have because yeah. they're doing a lot of the research with all the, the medical benefits now, right? They're realizing, wow, you mean this could be like good for people with PTSD and like yeah. depression and like Alzheimer's and stuff, right? Like, yeah, because it hyper connects the brain, right? So like they, they've been doing lots of research with that. You know, I think they were even saying they were using some uh, some for drug addiction as well. Yep. Like they were they were doing research with there's there's certain kinds of hallucinogens. You know, lots of people do like the ayahuasca getaway and with Joe Rogan GMT and blah 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 to get them. You know what I mean? And it helps them get off drugs. So. I don't know, man. I think it's all got its merit. I don't, I, uh, I, I went down that rabbit hole for a while, man, where I was really harsh mm -hmm. with all that stuff in and out. I ended up, I actually went to treatment for again, year and a half ago after the whole COVID mess came, I was mentally ill and having all kinds of depression issues and drugs and blah, blah, blah. But so I don't, I don't, I don't know really if, uh, if anything really should be illegal you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it ever helps anybody to have like uh, a mental issue because most of it's mental from what, for me anyway, yeah. most of my stuff was mental problems. I had, you know, mental illness with whatever my issue was or however was I was perceiving the world through a negative lens. Nobody was ever helped if they were in some kind of mental problem by being arrested yeah. because of some drug or whatever and thrown in prison, you know, because of the, I, I mean, like, it's like a victimless crime thing. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I could understand if you're like a drug dealer and you're like pushing crack cocaine on people. Sure. Yeah. You know, you maybe should be arrested and put in prison. That's different. I'm talking about like somebody who's like addicted because it's an illness. You know what I mean? Like, and they're, and they're, and they can't stop to have them be arrested and thrown in prison. It's got to cost just as much to get thrown in prison as it would be to like put them in treatment. Do you know what I mean? Like, no. and to like actually treat the the mental illness and the disease. I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me why any of that shit's legal. Because I mean, everybody, because anybody knows, you can get whatever you want whenever you want it, no matter how illegal you make it. It's weird, you know. It's almost like it's like it doesn't matter what it is. I could literally go down the street right now to like a Seven Eleven or whatever you Circle K, and just be like. Uh, that guy. Hey man, you know what I mean? You, you're my wrong. No, you're you're 100 right, man. And what, That's what I mean. What I think it's is, a waste of time. It really is. And if if I don't want to get too historical here on you, but if you look back at the Volstead Act, which was the prohibition of alcohol in I love country, history, right? My so favorite. With 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 that, what did that do? That propped up organized crime. You had people. Oh yeah, it made them huge. Yeah, they're yeah. running the stills and everything. 
Yeah, you know, and, and what is it doing now if you take a look 100 years later when we're making we're making weed illegal or we're making all these different drugs illegal that you can go, like you said, at a 7-Eleven, Circle K, whatever you want. You can find that one person. You can go out there and get it. Whether it's a gun, whether it's anything, you can get anything you want. Yeah. You know, yeah. And when, you, when you prop it up and you make something illegal, you're going to make it. When you tell somebody no as an adult, what does that make you do? I'm going to say, fuck you. I'm going to go do what I want to do because it's your body. It's your way. It's your money. It's it, you also, you can't, you can't stop people, man. No, you really you can't. Can. Right? You can try, but it doesn't do anything. And all you're doing is like you said, like, like I said, back in the twenties, you're propping up organized crime. And now you're doing it a hundred oh, years right. later with the cartel. The cartels have so much power because you're making everything illegal. You're driving the prices up. Right? Everything. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's just, it's just insane. Um, but so, I, so are they gonna make everything legal in the states soon, or is it just they're gonna leave it with this whole, like, you know, each state's a different country kind of thing? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It's gonna be each state because they don't want to come out. So here's the issue. Here's the main issue, at least from what I see. And I'm a very dumb person when it comes to this. I only see. <laughs> I I don't have an opinion, man. I am not very good. But I really don't have an opinion. There's so many people that are in prison <laughs> right now for being yeah. uh, for, for smoking. For a smoke. roach. Yes, right. And if you go and you make it federally legal, right? What is that? Yeah, let them all go. You gotta let them all go. But what does that really mean when you take when you think about it? You're taking money out of people with privatized prisons. That's an issue right there. Is privatized. Well, yeah, prisons. but that's something. Then you'll have people making all your shit for free either, right? Yeah, you know. So it's it's at the end of the day, it's a money yeah. thing. They make it federally legal. You know, then they yeah. have to have all of these other these other entities either come in or come out because, it, like I said, it's money at the end of the day, right? Once yeah. you start seeing somebody like Marlboro, and I don't want to call them out because the last thing I want to do is get hit with a cease and desist or, or, or a fucking it's suing me because I'm talking shit about Marlboro, the cigarette company and shit like that. But I guarantee you. Oh, Mar like Marlboro. Yeah, Marlboro. Yeah. I thought you were talking about Marvel. And what the fuck does Marvel have to do with this? No. Did Marvel prohibit drugs? By making all their superheroes? That sounds like, I think that's Marvel. No, no, Sorry. Marvel. Um, no, Marvel. Like, I, I guarantee you, once they have it where people like Marvel or these big these big tobacco companies that can go in there and buy a whole bunch of land and then they can start growing the shit, that's when you're going to see a real big change because you can't have these people that have old money. And it sounds like I'm a conspiracy theorist at this point, but you can't have these people that have this old money, this old wealth, right, that have been running this country essentially uh, with all of this, this, this money and this backing and this power that they have for yeah. all these political figures, you can't have them have their be undercut and their money be cut out, right? So yeah, so, so it's, start, it's the same as everything else. Yeah. At the end of the day, it, whoever you just follow the money, and you, you're really gonna find out where wherever. So did you have your baby? No, not yet. She's gonna be induced tomorrow morning. So yeah, so I'm I'm really excited. So you're having a baby tomorrow. I, I really hope so. I really hope it's quick because uh, with my first son, because there's an 11 year gap with my with my two sons, right? So my, my oh wow, oldest, yeah, right. We weren't even supposed to have the first one, let alone the second one. She was told when she was real young she'd never have kids. She was in a real bad. So it was like good news, bad news kind of thing. <laughs> she, she was <laughs> she was in a bad accident when she was younger, and she she almost died. And they told her you'll never have kids. So you know, I got the super semen over here, and then we ended up having a kid, right? Yeah, I got a flex yeah. of the sperm, right? Um, yeah, it was all me, man. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, you know, so huh. it's it's wild just sitting back and thinking like tomorrow. I'm hoping tomorrow we'll get to see him because it's been a it's been a long nine months, and I'm pretty sure it's been longer on my wife. And so you know, it's a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna name him Cooper Owen. Um, so, Bowen. Yeah, one of my favorite. Bro huh? Brown. Hey, bro. Bro. That's awesome. Yeah, one dude, of my he's gonna get the bros. Hey, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> totally, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm I like really that. Word to it, man. Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers uh, was Owen Hart back in the day. Um, so I, I got cool. to, yeah, I got to get a, a wrestling name in there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be doing that tomorrow. I'm hoping it's quick, you know, mainly for the wife because, like I said, she's just been miserable for the last nine months. You know, it's been it's a little bit rough. So is your other son? Is your other son super excited or what? He goes through stages right now, right? Like, so at first, like when we told him, he started crying. He's like, no, I don't want that. And I was like, well, it's kind of out of your hands, man. It's it's happening. And then <laughs> and like, get to help huh and you can tell him guess who's helping you're almost 13 guess who's the babysitter oh 
it's funny. Remember that time you didn't want to do the dishes here? Take care of your son. <laughs> it, it's funny because like, like at first he didn't want one but like the first time he got to like pick out something for the baby he started getting super excited and then over the last couple weeks when we found out that my wife wouldn't go past july 1st for um to be induced and everything like that she was uh he's been getting like super super clingy to me and then super clingy to my Aww. wife Right. So I think he's getting like that weird stage. He doesn't know what's going to happen because it and we, we try to tell him all the time. It's like nothing's going to change, man. It's just going to be an extra person. You know, we're still going to yeah. go to all the karate events. We're still going to do this. We're still going to go to the movies. We're still yeah. going to go everywhere. Nothing's going to change, man. We're just going to be he doesn't know if we're going to lose some loving from mommy and daddy. Yeah, which which if one? anything, it'll get more love because everybody will be like, everybody together, what does it come to? Oh, I love you. Oh, you love me. I love you so much. Oh, we're also in love. It's loving. It's true, though, right? It really is, man. I, yeah. I, I think he's going to he's gonna look back at it because the first thing he said, he's like, but he's going to get into my stuff. I'm like, dude, there's such a huge age gap between you and him. And I was like, first off, you get into my shit all the time. And I was like, <laughs> what is, what's the difference? I was like, I was like, you I'm going to be like, don't worry. He's going to have a bunch of cool stuff that you can get into, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you guys are going to like the same things between superheroes. Until we get in the swing and you can just, you can just let him go, right? You know what I mean? Like, give him some pushes on it. Yeah, it Spinning around the living room, man. Yeah, it, it like I said, I'm I'm really looking forward to it because I missed so much with my first son. When we did the math, man, I missed four years of my son's life. Four years, oh, yeah? Of, like, yeah, because of Navy, just consistently deployed, training up, you know, going out for this, going out for that. Four years of my son's life are just completely gone, right? I wasn't a different yeah. country, different continent, different whatever, right? Um, yeah. So it would be nice to actually get to be able to experience from start, you know, to when I finish, uh, whenever that is. Hopefully it's not for like 70, 80, you know, 90 years. I want to make it to 100. Uh -huh. How long were you in the, in the military? Seven and a half years. Well, seven and like? like five months. Was that like, did you like get deployed and stuff? All the time, man. My uh, my first duty station or my first four years, because the way I was, the way you do it in Navy is like you have uh, your, generally your first time or your first four years is sea duty, right? So they send you out to sea, you deploy. But for yeah. most commands, you will deploy, uh, you know, six to nine months. Um, and oh, then crazy. You, yeah, like a home for like a year, year and a half. And then you might hit another deployment before you rotate to shore duty. However, I got extremely lucky and I, I, yeah, lucky. I hit, <laughs> I hit three deployments back to back to back. So I was gone for like eight and a half months. I think my first one, I was home for, uh, I want to say maybe eight, nine months. Cause it got delayed. Then I was gone for another nine months. Then I come home, I'm home for like three months and then I'm gone for another nine months. Right. So I hit back, to back, to back. Yeah. It was just, it was horrible. I got to see a lot of shit that I never would have gotten to see if I just would have went to school or went to college I would have been in debt um, when I got out of high school but I got to see the world essentially you know some places yeah. to see everything but I got to see the world so that was cool I got to meet some cool friends that was cool however I lost something that I'll never get back it doesn't matter what happens we talked Rick and Morty just a second ago right unless Rick's going to invent a way for me to go back in time or Doc Brown and Marty McFly are going to jump in the DeLorean and I'm going to get you know that time back that's something I'll never get back right so at yeah. the end of the day, it was cool but if I could do it all over again, I don't think I would ever join, man. Because I, I missed no. something that that I, like I said, I, I would just never get back. Um, yeah, I hear that, man. Yeah, you know, but it is what it is, man. It, it, it makes you a stronger person. It, it makes it you does, yeah. something. And then you get to see something that most people don't. Most people don't get to experience, you know, most people live 10 to 20 miles from where they're born. It gives you a different idea of what's hard as well, eh? Yes, it really does, man. It, it tells you, know, you like, some things will happen, you'll be like, eh, it's not that bad. Like, it's so like it's really not that bad. That's actually not even a bad thing at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 like now I'm I'm at this point now where like some really really horrible shit has to happen to get me down. You know, yeah. like like real like even like I don't even know what it would be. I, so, I mean like I've I've pretty much been on cloud nine for a while now, just happiness level. You know, I, I think I think when it's happiness, one of those things that just kind of comes from within. Doesn't matter what really happens. You know, it's like you can dwell on things. You know, but when you've had really yeah, like actual bad shit happen it makes everything else be like ah, whatever we'll just, try to, uh, just carry on like you know what i mean so when you you can look at it and go you might not have done it but it also helps your future outlook because if you didn't do that you wouldn't realize how hard shit can actually be 100 percent. you know so when good things happen you're like wow this is amazing where you know so you can have good shit happen 
like for me, if something neat happens, I'm like static and overblown. This is awesome. Someone else would be like, that's so stupid, man. Like, why would you even get excited about that? You know, because it's all perspective, right? And unless you've seen or experienced some of that real harder kind of negative crap or things that are difficult, a lot of the good times get lost. You know, people get used to, you know, it's like people complaining about stuff, complaining about how hard they have it on the internet, drinking a Starbucks on their cell phone. Oh, my life is so fucking difficult. You know what I mean? This is horrible. I'm repressed. Ah! <laughs> Right, and having a small phone with their Nikes, walking down the street, and their Louis Vuitton, driving a car is fucking repressed bullshit. Sorry, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like you got it hard, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I I wouldn't say I had it hard. It was a little difficult from time to time. You know, like I said, just missing the family was the hardest part. But man, uh, going back to something you said earlier, I wanted to, I want to really swing on because it was something that we talked about. Um, you know, through Messenger, <laughs> through Messenger, when you reached back out and you said you want to come on and do a solo episode. Um, yeah. And it's like I said, something you just said just a minute ago, man, depression. Um, it, oh, yeah, man. And it's something we talked about. I don't know if you were ever real close with Big Jim. Uh, you remember Big Jim and stuff like that? I remember Big Jim. I, I, I um, when it came to the show, um, I mean, I came in and I spent some time with people, but it was a lot of work. You know what I mean? Like it was work yeah. stuff. I, didn't, I mean, um, like, um, I spent time with Matt and Sam, you know, and like, I love Danny, man. Like Danny was like family, like a father figure kind of to me. Like, I love that man. He like that show without that guy wouldn't have gone anywhere, you know? Um, but like, as far as like actually hanging out outside of work with a lot of the people, it didn't really happen. It was more like work event stuff, you know? I mean, I do, I do, I do remember some of the stuff, but you were saying big Jim went up, went down the, the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, we, we talked, uh, like, I never, I always tell everybody, I try to preface this, because a lot of people like, oh, man, you just need to shut up and let your guests talk a little bit more. And I try to tell them this is not a <laughs> interview, man. It, it's, I should have named this, like, you know, chatting about cartoons or cartoons and chats or some shit like that, or chit chat and cartoons. Because most people have- You know what, though? You know what I've learned, though, man? It doesn't matter what you do. There's going to be that one fucking baby. Yeah. I didn't like the way you didn't talk about the thing with the guy and how come you don't know that you don't care about me, man. You don't care. You're getting it wrong. It's not how I wanted you to do your thing. You just fuck this place. Do it different next time. Meanwhile, there's nothing positive on there. There's no constructive anything. They're just bitching to piss and moan because whatever they're doing, they didn't like what you're doing, but it didn't matter what decision you made or what you did. They wouldn't have liked it anyway. So whatever, man. Yeah, fuck it. That's why I got like once I started, yeah. I was not ready for how big that episode got with you guys, right? I was not ready for just the comments, the people reaching out, the crazy shit yeah. that happened. Um, I, and it's oh, only, yeah. I it, love that when people 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 see it, they're like, "Well, you need, uh, Tony doesn't seem like he cares." It's like, fucking don't. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Good observation. No fucks given. Congratulations. You figured it out wonderful sorry go ahead oh no 100 percent, man but what, <laughs> no, what, I, what i what i got from it right is this is my show right i'm gonna conduct yeah. it how i want to conduct it and i don't totally. I, you guys got asked the same fucking thing how many times have you been asked what's under double d's hat i don't want to ask you the same thing. bullshit every single time this is not a yes no interview this is a conversation with people this thing was yeah. meant for for us getting to know you guys just as well as getting yeah. to me because without me i'm not reaching out to you i like i like real you know what i mean so like i've never been like a pretender person you know like i i cannot pretend that i like somebody like it yeah. doesn't work there's just it's not you know i don't waste my time um so like when i was there i was like no 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 i'm here because like we've never done this right and julian's cool and these guys you know so we're just gonna do this thing right yeah. And I mean, like, if you even saw our reaction, a lot of the questions were like, Ugh. like, dude, some of the questions, oh. I don't know, dude. Like, <laughs> fuck do I know? What they'd be like, well, you know, an episode so and so, there was this time where Eddie did this thing. It's like, dude, I don't even know anything. Like, I was so baked and so fucked up <laughs> that whole time. Like, I, I know I did at Ed and Eddie. Yeah. I think yeah. that happened, you know? <laughs> But it was like, and then it was like, wow, that was over. What happened? That was fun, right? You know, it was like one of those things. 
So I don't remember shit. Yeah. You know, and it was kind of, it, it's just like one of those things, you know, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel bad. I would love to know the answers. And I get that you guys are passionate. I get that there's people that are passionate about it. But, like, I've done a few, like, question answer things. People don't like my answers. A lot of times, like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think about it? Uh, did the show. What's your favorite one? The last one. Why? Because <laughs> that was the end of it. And I don't know. You know, like, I don't know, man. I just don't know. But, yeah. yeah. Like I said, it, it's, it was it, something we did, but it's not like, you know, it, I mean, it was a blip in my life. It definitely is not something that has consumed any sort of place in my life for any moment after. Well, that's what I find so fascinating about you, and it's specifically you and, and Danny, because you, you brought up Danny earlier. What I absolutely love about you two people in specific about this show is what you just said. You don't pretend to do anything that you don't want to do. What you want to do, that's what everybody should really aspire to do in this world as a person, right? You should make sure that your home is taken care of, your wife, your kids, if you have a kid's wife, if you have a husband, take care of them, shit, right? You want to make sure what you have at home is taken care of, right? Totally. You should strive for what you want to do, right? You told me when we started talking that you do the oil, the oil rig business so you can do the fun shit that you want to do. And that's what life is all about. You've yeah, got to I, sacrifice I, a little bit to get the fun, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, you you, you, you got to, it, it all depends what you want to do. Yeah. Right? You know, um, but the things that I want to do are going to cost some money. Uh, 100%, like most things do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I want to retire early, you know? And, but I, I mean, I, as far as any, anything else goes, you just got to make your decisions and make sure that you're not doing something because somebody else, it's like a, it's like a relationship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, like, um, I say to my girlfriend that I don't do anything I don't want to do. And it's true. So when I, if I'm doing things that may seem whatever, I'm not doing it because, like, just to make her happy. I'm actually doing it because I'm enjoying being there doing it. You know what I mean? Like, whatever chore or whatever it is. You know what I mean? But I, I, I mean, I've seen, I've seen a lot of people that get into this cycle where they just, oh, you know, I have to do this or I have to do that. And it's a very simple thing. You know, I don't look at it as have to. I look at it like I get to do this stuff. You know, like it's a, it's a, it's a gift. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah, I get to go and hang out. At this place with this freaking awesome person, and we get to do all of these things together. You know, it's not like, oh, I have to go do this. No, I don't have to do shit. If I wanted, I'd go sit in the corner and be like, I like my nose and my finger and my nose. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to do shit. The fact that, you know, I get to do all this stuff, and then, you know, I that was one thing I learned in treatment, man. It's like, if you think about, you know, there's a lot of this have to or I should do it, you know, but really, if you think about it, you actually you get the opportunity. You get to do all this stuff. Like this is, you, you don't have to do anything. It's a choice. You know, if you're sitting somewhere and you feel like you have to do all this stuff, don't and see what happens. Yeah. Do stuff that you want to do. And you're like, yeah, now I get to go do that. Right? Like even for work, I'm actually happy to go to work. I'm like, yeah, I get to go to work today, man. I, there's a lot of people that have no jobs. Yeah. I'm like, fucked. Right? I get to go to work and I get to earn a paycheck and then I get to do all this wonderful stuff after, you know what I mean? There's never a have to moment. You know, I don't feel like there's anything that I have to do other than eat. Cause I'll probably die. <laughs> other than that, I'm only doing what I want. Period. That's you know? And then if I look at it that way, if I look at it that way, I found this just helps me. If I look at it, that I get to do all this stuff and I'm only doing things that I choose that I want to do then while I'm doing everything, doesn't matter what the task is or who I'm hanging out with, I'm making a conscious choice that I want to and I get to be there and I'm happy about it. And the times that we're having are frigging out of this world because of it. Because it's like, yeah, we're doing this, right? Instead of like, oh, I have to go and do, I have to go and do this stuff, man. Right? It's just a, how you look at things. It changes everything. It goes back to at that. At least for me. Well, it goes back to that word of the day that we were just talking about. It's all about perspective at the end of the day. It is perspective. Yeah. Right? Like even taking out the garbage. I don't have to take out the garbage. Right? I could leave it there. 
I could leave the garbage there and let it fucking rot and sit on the couch, man. Come on, old. Right? I should be happy that I get to take out the garbage and then someone's going to come and take it away from me. I don't got to go bury that shit in the woods. <laughs> right? I can't. I get to just take this back. I, and I get to go put it over there. I just said, magically, it's gone. Wonderful, right? It's Look it. at the alternative. That's what I mean. It's all perspective. I don't have to take the garbage out. I could just sit there and freaking throw garbage all over the house. It's going to get kind of messy. I get to just put it in this one single bag, put in a tiny little bit of effort, carry it out, and then it magically it's gone. Wonderful. <laughs> right? It's all perspective, man. A hundred percent. And and let's yeah. go back to let's go back to one thing real quick, man. Because you were talking yeah. uh, uh, before COVID that you, you had you had did some treatment. Um, yeah. Now I won't go as we'll go as personal as you want to go, right? Because I don't. I'm want open to, book, man. Fuck I, it, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, my uh, I I dealt with a bunch of mental illness stuff. I was depressed, mm -hmm. divorced, and friggin' bad relationships, and blah 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 blah, and COVID, and you know I was sick of being like the person that always had to take care of everything for everybody. You know what I mean? And it was a perspective thing. I was in a pity party. Oh, poor me. I have to do all this stuff. I have to work. I have to take care of the kids. You know, it's all perspective. And I got depressed and I went on the wheel, the hamster wheel, and I said, fuck it. And I was going to off myself because mm. I was just sick of it. So I got a copious amount of drugs, a lot. Uh, I wouldn't want to start saying what and how much, but it was enough to kill a, a large donkey at least. Yeah. or two yeah and i uh i try i basically shoved as much of everything as i possibly could in. like i should have been dead really i'm surprised i didn't yeah. but i got to the other end and i uh was like well that was fucked and then it was kind of like one of those things where i was like well, i'm a dad so you know my kid didn't see nothing so that was a well, i wouldn't have been able to live with myself with my kids i think they were with their mom um so i called and i I, I, knew, I figured I, I, got it in. I wouldn't say I had like a drug problem per se, you know, but it was everything else under. I mean, I had a drug problem, obviously, because I tried to kill myself with it. But it was, it was, it was. There's always something behind that's going on. You know what I mean? Mentally or I need counseling big time. I and I went and got it. I called and I my work helped me out. You know, they put me through treatment. They were awesome um and it was great man like it's i've never been better since you know um and then you know when you get in there and you start talking about there's a whole it's like a lot of it's perspective and you know having to feel feelings you know like um i know for a lot of men especially um there's not a lot of feelings to be had yeah if that makes sense you know like there's like happy and there's angry yeah 100 you know let me get you real quick. Let me get you real quick. When I when I did a psychology class, man, I, I had a teacher that explained this exactly what you're saying. Uh, yeah. With men, think about it as a crayon box, like Crayola crayons, right? Men yeah. have the eight color box. When the females of the of our of our same species and shit like that, of human beings, they have the 24 or the 36. They have all of these ranges of emotions. But men, specifically, you feel anger, you feel tired, you feel horny, you feel happy. All these other basic yeah. human instincts is what men feel. And I 100% agree with what you're saying. We're, we're so repressed yeah. as men, right? But but I didn't mean to cut exactly. you off. I really got no, it. no, that's exactly what it is. So for me, I didn't have sadness or any of that. I literally had happy anger. Yeah. And my anger was getting a hold. I didn't like it. Yeah. You know, I don't like being angry. It's not who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was just learning how to feel properly. You know what I mean? And, you know, dealing with other crap. Like everybody's got crap in their lives. You know, everybody's got this thing or, you know, I mean, I, I don't think people out there realize how many people had a dirty uncle that, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not as uncommon as people think. Mm -hmm. you know all of this bad shit that happens to everybody you know it's just a matter of i went and dealt i went and dealt with it all and got honest in there and uh i came out and i've been sober ever since you know and, and the thing is i don't i don't feel like i've lost anything by being sober i feel like i've gained everything yeah you know what i mean like i won't ever drink again mm -hmm. right because to me alcohol is like the root of all evil you know like i mean alcohol is just like the gateway drug hands down that and cigarettes but like 
alcohol is hands down the most gateway drug. I, I've never seen anybody smoke a doobie and be like, oh, I need some blow, man. I need smoke, you know what I mean? Yeah, get some rails. You know, it doesn't happen. People drink and then they get rails, you know what I mean? Yeah. People smoke weed, they get Doritos. It's <laughs> totally different. You know Dur- what I'm saying? Doritos. Yeah, Doritos, Doritos, you know, cheese, you some layers. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Cool Ranch, boom. Exactly. That's what you break out in when you smoke weed. You start drinking, you break out in handcuffs because you're doing all the other shit, right? But it, it all come it, for me. It was uh, it was mental illness and perspective of life, man. You know, I just gotten down over the years. I've been kicked a lot, and then you know, a pity party. But then it was funny when it when I started to look at it. All the negative shit that I looked at as being bad was actually positive because if that bad shit didn't happen, this positive thing wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? I started to be able to kind of look at my life differently. You know, you know, like. If everything kind of happens, but even without bad stuff, you wouldn't be who you are now. Yeah. You know, it's just like when I said earlier with you, it's like, you know, like you doing that, you don't know what hard is, you know, it's like you see someone complaining with their cell phone and their Starbucks, my life is so hard, right? It's like, dude, you, you know what I mean? That's all perspective, you know? And then you go and talk to somebody in the slums of some third world country and they're sitting there with a stick and a rock. And they got running water, and they're like, hey, I got running water! Hey! Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. But then you got a pair of them, it's just all perspective, man. And, that, and, that's, and that's what I noticed with Wicked. And I'm not on any medication or nothing. I, I found that uh, I did not like antidepressants at all. I think they made things worse. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe this is my physical makeup or whatever. But when I was having, you know issues with my divorce and blah 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 and counseling beforehand they tried to give me all these fucking pills pharmaceuticals are the devil too man like like just you know like i think that's why they try to keep weed down man you know because the pharmaceutical companies won't make as much money and you come weed and just do just one thing that kind of does it all right 100 yeah, percent. needless to say i'm not against weed i don't know if i don't know if does that make sense but like I'm not really against any drugs. I just think um, I just think that it's not the drugs that are the problem. I think that there's other things going on inside people that make it get there. Do you know what I mean? That makes that it's like it's almost like the drugs mask the actual problem. Yeah, like, like, you know what I mean? Like when people and what I mean, we're not we're not treating the people. You know what I mean? Which is what needs the treatment. The drugs aren't gonna aren't going to change anything you can't just take the drugs away there's something still you can you can take all the drugs away the person can never have the drugs again and they still have the same problem they had it's ripping off you know what i mean yeah it's ripping off a bandit yeah. you sit here and take exactly that. and we'll, we'll we'll diverge for just a second right because uh i 100 percent get what you're saying man and uh one of the main reasons that i got out of the military other than you know um missing my wife and son i got hurt right i hurt my back and i hurt my neck mm. and, uh you know, so it's something, I mean, my doctor told me the last time I did a checkup with a VA that I'll probably have to need a new hip before the age of 38, 39. So I've got, hey, a, at least you get a new one. I got a new one, man. And hopefully I'll be bionic. You can get, think about that. You can actually get a new hip. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is, right? Right. So, so you could, you, that's what I mean. It's that same perspective thing. Oh, you know, I'm going to have to get a new hip before I'm, dude, you have the opportunity that your hip's so fucked, they can actually just give you a new one. Yeah. It's, it's, it's medical marvels, right? But uh, yeah, that's what I mean. the only reason I was getting to that is because I had never experienced depression at all in my life up until that point. When I got hurt, it took me uh, over a year to get an MRI because I went directly on a deployment. Like my, my back, right? When I, I lifted up something heavy and I didn't know the answer, no, right? When you get out of boot yeah. camp, you get brainwashed, right? You do, yeah. do, 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 because in the line, if you ever go to war, you don't need somebody in your platoon or in your, in your division or something like that questioning. If they say, oh, boy, uh, yeah. no, sorry, guys, no, you go ahead. I'm going to be over there. All right, no, you get your own, get your own shit. I'm going to sit down. hundred percent. You want a hundred percent compliance all the time, right? So I did, exactly. I could say no. So they essentially told me to pick up something too heavy, which I did. I took it downstairs that were broken and I slipped and instead of dropping it, right? Somebody was trying to help me. And if I would have dropped a 300 pound item, it would have killed this person, right? So I decided to hold on to it. And when I held on to it, I felt my back go like this. It felt like a piece of paper, right? So, from my ass cheek 
all the way up to my shoulder blade. It was just one big bruise. I mean, it looked like dark, like my, my, my jacket on right here, right? It was disgusting. Oh. So it took me so long to actually get seen. Over a year to get an MRI, to find out a couple bulging discs, a couple, you know, uh, what was the other thing? It was the narrowing of the spinal canal and spinal stenosis and all this other crazy shit. It essentially meant your back and your hip is fucked up. You know, do some of this, do some of that. But the one thing that they wanted to push almost instantly was pills. And these pills... <laughs> You need lots of Oxycontin right now. Well, they didn't give me Oxycontins. And here's the thing. My dad ruined his life on painkillers. He went to prison when I was real young. So for the longest time, up until recently, yeah, we, had no, we had no communication. Hey, pharmaceuticals are the devil, dude. A hundred They're just like, these are fine. You'll be okay. Just take more of them. <laughs> well, they're not working, them. take two. And if not, take three. Uh, what, and then, uh, if that's not working, crush them up and store them, but I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's what it turns into. Yep. And that's okay. But weed. Yes, the devil. No. The devil's, the devil's no, is, is, is no, no bueno. Um, the devil's but, it. but they put me, yeah, the devil's it. They put me on a, on a pill called uh, pre-gabapetin. And what that does, it was, it, it was used for something else. I've heard of that one. Good. Yeah, it, it was also made for neurological pain because that's what they said a lot is the nerve damage that I had around my hip and my back. Yeah. So they put me on this and then it was a psych, it was a cycle pill, right? Where you'd, you'd take two for so long and then you'd take one and then you'd go back to taking two and it was supposed to help with the nerve pain, right? Um, yeah. And I noticed that it wasn't helping with the pain, but I started having all of these thoughts creep in. Now, I'd never been mm. a, oh, my God, it's butterflies and rainbows type of dude, right? I've always been <laughs> like, like you were saying, it was either happy or angry type of thing. And generally, I have a hot temper. It's very quick, to, you know, very quick type of thing, right? But I, get I, it. I noticed that that I started having these thoughts, not like the thoughts of self-harm or harming somebody else, but thoughts of being worthless, Thoughts of everybody hating me. Thoughts that I've never had before because I'm a genuinely like nice, like nice guy, man. I yeah. try to do the right thing. I try to talk. I talk to anybody because you never know what a compliment but or something. That's what pharmaceuticals do, do man. Yeah. It changed the sure. chemical. The chemical makeup, it just completely destroyed it. So I, I remember sitting down and I was hurting so bad that I asked my wife to just, if she would rub my neck, I, I couldn't turn my head this far. And I just remember sitting down in front of her like, hey, would you just rub my neck? I, and I, I don't know what's going on, but I, I can't. It hurts so bad right now. And I just started fucking crying out of nowhere for no reason. And it's not like I'm a monster. Good to you, man. I don't cry, you know, that type of thing. It's not, it's not that. It was just. I yeah. cry. I yeah. love it. Big cry. Yeah. It's, it's, it's But before then, I didn't understand why I was crying. Like, why did I feel like such a piece of shit? Why did I feel like if I were to just drive off of a bridge, nobody would miss me? Why did I feel like this? That's and I started having all man. of these thoughts, right? Like, why do I feel yeah. like this? And then I talk to the doctor. I'm like, say, hey, doc, I'm having all of these thoughts. And then I go into counseling, right? I talk to an amazing mm -hmm. doctor. His name is Dr. Love. It sounds like it's a fake fucking name, but his name is Dr. Love. Um, Love it. I, I wish I could. I wish I could find this guy because I've tried looking him up on social media. And I just can't find him. But we did this like whole. It was a whole bunch of people that got hurt, right? So it was like a focus, not a focus group, but like a a a, a, a what are they fucking called? I can't think of it, right? So it's just a group of people that got hurt. Everybody's talking, working yeah. together, and shit like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, group session. Group session. Thank you. So I started yeah. putting myself off of these pills, and I started to notice like, oh man. I didn't really think like that, but there was ramifications from getting off of these pills because I still had that. Oh, it gets worse, yeah. Yeah, I still had that hatred yeah. of myself, right? I still had this. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. You can't just come off of these pills because you'll fucking kill yourself. Yeah. You got to wean yourself off of this shit. Even, even with weaning myself off that I had such issues with it. And, and, and to this day, I still have days where I, like, I don't sleep as it is anyways, I might get two or three hours of sleep. And then I'm up for three, four hours, wondering why I'm up and not being able to go to sleep. But I'm working through shit in my head. My brain just works differently than a lot of people, but everybody works differently than a lot of people. Yeah. Right? So I'll bet you weed helps you 10 times more than any other crap they gave you. It really does, man. It, it helps. It helps me get rid of any preconceived notion of what I have, like all of this self pity or all of this, like, yeah. why, why am I not good enough? Or why am I not doing this? Or why am I not here when I should be here? Cause I do this to get there. It takes everything and it just, it puts blinders on you. Right. It's like, it I don't want to do everything yes. down. It, yeah. it I never had anxiety. It's until rid of the pain. Right. So it was it was wild to see what depression really was, because 
you know, I don't want to get too deep here. Fuck it. We're going to go deep. You know, when, yeah, I, don't I, was, do it, but... when I was younger, if anything, this is just a talking session. I don't give a fuck who watches this at this point mm. because I'm having fun. Because yeah. very rarely do you get to have a actual conversation with people. Most people, they go straight to their phone, right? Oh, this guy's talking. I'm going to say something. He's going to say something. Nobody's really listening. But I feel like we're having a general. Yeah, I don't really give a shit if anybody Most listens to it either. <laughs> I don't fucking no care. No fuck you, man. Yeah. You know, so yeah. very rarely. This is what people need. People need conversations like this. People need to be actually to talk. Whether you work on something or you're a fucking trash man, if you got a cool story and you're a cool person, I want to talk to you. I don't give a shit what you do, right? I agree with you, man. You totally. Know, um, Deep conversations are good. A hundred percent. It's what it's what's progressed our, our 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 species for so long, man. Sitting by a campfire, talking, eating food. You know, civilizations were built on bread. But nonetheless, that's man, a myth know. thing too, man. You think that's huge? The lost art of campfires. Campfires are way more entertaining than any television. Goddamn right, Sitting man. Around actually talking to human beings around a fire is amazing. It's a Therapy. group experience. Yes, it's a group yeah. experience. Everybody's feeling the same thing. Everybody's like, oh, what'd you do? What'd you do? Oh, that's so fucking cool. I've known you for 20 years. How do I not know this story? How do I not know you used to sell drugs? Because we were too busy on our phones on iChat playing Warcraft, talking about the fucking waves of dragons coming in, and Leroy kept spawning the fucking thing. So I couldn't tell you. I used to play World of Warcraft, but nonetheless, we're going to go back for just a second. I did, too. I, I was uh, I got a high warlord in the original World of Warcraft because I was super addicted to that one. Yeah. <laughs> I played I played, a, I played a resto druid on uh, Burning Crusade. I, I love how we go from depression to World of Warcraft, which is like the ultimate life forgetter. Like, if you have life problems, just go take it out on people digitally and pretend you're awesome there. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it, it's funny. I have a I'm a fucking high warlord orc. I'll fuck you up, man. You know, you know, you know me. I got a giant axe of magic. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That's a good way to forget about your life is yeah. go play some hardcore video games. No problem. Yeah, Except no. for every problem that's, you know, like in the real world. Waiting. That's waiting. Right? It's yeah, waiting but you keep forgetting school. about it because you got to do some farming, man. I got to do my mining shit, you know? <laughs> oh, fucking all those what do you mean the baby's got he fuck the baby he's not helping me spawn this guy anyway but uh you know, <laughs> I, like I, like, I like these type of conversations man because it's fun because you get to see more than what what a lot of people are open up right but going back to the depression thing i didn't understand yeah. that. i used to have this this idea of people that committed suicide i used to think that they were weak I used to think that they were pussies. I used to think that, that they were cowards, right? At the end of the day, that's what I used yeah. to think. Until my mother lost her boyfriend at the time. He was on a bike, uh, not a bicycle, excuse me, a motorcycle. And a 16 or 17 year old kid pulled out in front of him and slammed on the brakes because he didn't have a driver's license. He'd never really driven before. And he saw a, a driver on a motorcycle so close to him. He, did, he just froze. He didn't know what happened. He was a kid. He made a mistake and that mistake ended up being fatal. But here's the thing most people don't know about me when I've told this story. It's my mom was supposed to be on the back of that motorcycle that day. She, oh, crazy. She got held up at work, right? If, if she wouldn't have got held up at work, my mom would have been killed just like Jim was, right? And the crazy thing about that was, was I, I did not like this guy at all, right? I knew he was okay of a person, but he was super hard on me for no reason. Right. He had two yeah. kids that didn't give a shit about him that he I don't know if he cared about them. I want to say he did, because being a father, it's very hard, no matter how much of a piece of shit you are. It's very hard to say you don't give a shit about your kids. Now, there are outliers out there that just don't give a fuck about their kids. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, or they pretend they don't. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not that. So I got But I feel like he was harder on me because I think he knew I could take it or I knew he knew that I was a good person, that I wasn't a fuck up like his kids were and yeah or saw something in here or whatever yeah you know some Any way to rationalize them treating you like shit i get it yeah you know yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but but like, like <laughs> at it, when that happened i noticed my mom change overnight right she, the man she was in love with right died yeah on the motorcycle she just she should have been on that you know she didn't crumble there was days like, I, I can't remember the name of the song, but it, the, the guy, it was Meatloaf, right? She had one album they always listened to together. And that that album was on constant replay for almost two fucking years, right? Oh, every that makes time, it very fun. Every time I heard her come into the, to the garage, she was playing that album. And I fucking knew she was going to be wrecked. 
there is nothing worse than than somebody you love so much that hurts so fucking bad that you can't and that's do what it is, anything, yeah. anything to help. It doesn't matter what you say, what you do. You always know when they go to sleep, that's what they're thinking. It's a mental mental thing. Right? Trap. She told me yeah. when, when I was younger that she thought about taking her, she had a Nissan Titan, right? She was thinking about taking that fucking 6,000 or 4,000 pound truck, whatever it is, and smashing it into a tree going 85 miles an hour. She told me that at the age of 16. Just to make it stop. Just to make it stop because she was in yeah. such a fucking, and if I start crying, I apologize, man, because it's- That's cool, it, man. It's Let her with, with, with my mom specifically, with, there's one way to like really get to me. It's my mom, my dogs, my wife, and my kids, right? Those, I'm the same those, way, dude. Those four things, those will really get me hot right off the bat, but you know- Get right down to the feelers, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Specifically with her, when she told me that, my my idea of what suicide was or why people do it completely changed because I knew how much my mother loved me and my mom's still here. I knew how much she loved my brothers and sisters. I knew how much she loved life, no matter how depressed she was, right? So she went through a very, yeah. very hard time, like most people do when they lose a loved one, right? And it, it really oh, totally. changed my perspective on on what suicide was and then i'm pretty sure he'll get upset but i don't think he listens to it my brother tried to kill himself too a few years back because of an ex-wife that was just brutal she didn't want him seeing her kid and all this other crazy shit dude i i get it it was literally to just make it stop yeah you know and i i i never understood that until i had my cousin my cousin committed suicide just before christmas and i mean i don't blame him i have no idea what he's going through yeah, you know, but it, when I think about it, it was like it must have been bad. Like it was the pain and anguish and agony and the the hamster wheel of revolving. Ah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, you know it's it's got to be bad for you to take that kind of a drastic measure just to make it stop. And the way that I looked, I don't look at it as cowardice or anything. It's not an easy thing to do, man. It's not. That's a hard one. Like I mean. I tried to do it with drugs because I didn't really want to kill myself. And I was like, well, you know, if it happens, uh, then uh, it happens. Yeah. And then in the meantime, I can still get really high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and then, uh, but it's not final. You know what I mean? Like, I could have never been like, Phew! you know what I mean? Because it's so final. Because that, that's a, to, to, to really be in so much agony and pain that that's an option. You know, I was kind of like happy for him because it's like, well, at least he doesn't have to deal with that shit anymore. It was so bad yeah. that he would have taken that drastic of an action just to make it stop. You yeah. know what I mean? It, 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 like, thank God, thank God it's over for him that he doesn't have to do that anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, and just to pause for just a second, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever having, you know, something like this happen, before, if you decide to take that step, and I hope you don't, ladies and gentlemen, no. boys and girls, do not take that step because there's nothing worse. It might, the pain might end for you, but we were just, yeah. we were just watching the show uh, downstairs before I came up here. My wife is telling me it's, it's one of these shows where it's the outdoors type of shows and uh, the, these game wardens go and find people. And there was this little boy is 16 years old. He was missing. And then he ended up hanging himself, climbing up to a deer stand and jumping off and killing himself. And uh, I wasn't here when it happened, but my wife was telling me about it because my son was watching. I got an 11 year old son. Right. So she was asking, like, what what did he do? Is, is he OK? And she's like, no, he, he killed himself. And, she, and he was and he didn't understand. Like most people don't understand, even as an adult, let alone 11 year old kid. When you take you make a decision that is so final, that is so. Yeah, that's what I mean, I'm it, glad it, it didn't work when I tried. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's call still, somebody, man. There's so many people that go in and they and before I get off. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're having issues with suicide or if you're having those type of thoughts, please reach out to somebody. Reach out to your mom. Reach out to your dad. Reach out to your best friend. Yeah. Fuck, man. Reach out to me. You can sit here and post Tell a comment. Somebody. Call somebody. Yeah, call somebody, man, because what you might be feeling in that that one specific low part of your life, it gets better. It really does. It, it can it, get it, better. Yeah, totally. It, it really does. Look at Tony. Look at me. I mean, the stories that I'm about to tell you, like I said, my mom wanted to kill herself. My brother tried yeah, to kill it himself. It does get better. You know, there there is help out there. Don't make a decision because you're in your lowest point and you think that's the only way out because you might end your suffering, but there's 20 to 30 people that are going to continue to suffer and might not ever be able to get past that that darkest part of their life. Yeah. Um, because and if you, you can make it past that low point, 
and get to the other side where you're not feeling that way anymore, it sounds weird, but when you make it past that lowest of low points, everything on the other side seems like so much more of a gift. Yes. And you're like, wow, I could have missed all of this wonderful shit. Yeah. You know that I just looked at it wrong before. Like I said, even something small, like you get to take out the trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you could have been dead and then you wouldn't have been, you know, you wouldn't have had the opportunity to take that breath yeah. and go pick up that bag and take it out. Something so simple mm-hmm. and still joyous. If you just look around and kind of smell and realize, you know, we're just on this rock traveling so fast through this vacuum. Of, you know, we're basically just like an energy ball running this skeleton mobile. You know, like when you think about the crazing of it, even if it's shitty now, change your scenery, change where you are, there's always something beautiful out there. And if you can get past that moment of uh, yeah. and talk to somebody and maybe help work through it, there's beautiful things on the other side. There really is. And there's a lot of people yeah. that don't see that. All they see is, is the bad. They see the negative. So like I said, ladies and gentlemen, please, before you choose to make that final decision, please reach out to somebody. Um, and then... Yeah. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect when we started this talk, but I'm, I'm like I said, I'm really glad we're talking because there's, yeah, like said, there's a lot of people that don't get to talk to people for one that don't. If, I don't know why, but I think talking to people sounds really weird. Having actual discussions more than oh yeah, the weather's pretty good there. Eh? Oh yeah, totally fucking yeah. weather's hot. Yeah, 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 it's been some rain. Oh no, 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 no. the weather, the rain has been weathering wet stuff down. Having conversations has been made taboo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to, you know, be able to actually talk to someone, you know, like um, whether it doesn't matter what it is, any kind of conversation about anything, whether uh, religion, sexuality, drugs, yeah. depression, whatever, whatever it is, conversations about substance have been made taboo to have, you know what I mean? Or people like, oh, you know what I mean? Like you try to have a conversation with somebody about whatever it is and they just don't want to talk about it we'll just won't talk about it yeah. you know whether it's politics whether it's any anything that's anything of substance you know people it, it's like this thing where it's become taboo to have an opinion or to even crazier have a conversation about it and possibly learn something and change your opinion yeah you know what i mean like it's just it's everybody's been so consumed by this machine of whatever that we're not talking about things of substance with each other and actually listening to the other person do you know what i mean like actual deep conversations have been made taboo and i don't know why you just well here's the thing you you could say so i've had this conversation with my tech guy larry a few times because he thinks that if and some people are like this and I get it, but you know, this isn't for some people. This is for the people that want to sit here and just be taken away for a little while. Like, why do we go to movies? Why do we watch cartoons? Why do we watch television shows? Why do we play video games to escape, to experience something where we don't have to deal with our baggage and our bullshit for 20 minutes or two hours yeah. or fuck if yeah. you're in world of Warcraft, six straight weeks of not blinking. Right. So <laughs> two years. Wait a second. What happened? Did we kill our fish? I thought the first one was yeah. <laughs> Shit, how old am I? When's the last time I went to the? Oh my god, who are you? Yeah, I mean, but, anyway. but he he wanted me to do a a a clips as well because a lot of people want to see two to three minutes vice two hours. But what I think you lose in clips, two to three minutes, I'm perfectly fine doing clips and people get to see, you know, funny parts or something serious or something that, that, that needs to be highlighted. And now I do a teaser trailer for every episode I do. Um, but, but what you see with clips is the same thing that you were just talking about. Why people don't have conversations, why people don't listen specifically, that word specifically rings out. It echoes out, listens, nobody listens, nobody talks. I've got something to say. Tony's got something to say. I'm going to say what I want to say. Then Tony's going to, we play this, this, this game where we go back and forth, where we say shit. Yeah. Nobody's really learning from each other. Nobody's really listening to each other. And then we have this weird way of going, Oh, okay. I guess we've talked enough. Bye. See you later. Right. So it's a hundred percent. Totally. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. We've consumed the talking regimen for the day. We did our friend hangout. It's been an hour. 
Yeah. I'm going to go flip Facebook now and see what I'm supposed to think. <laughs> well, it's, it's people, people are, 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 are uh, pre-programmed to, especially now, because like I said, we talk about cell phones so much. We sit here, oh, yeah, man. we do this, we do this, we do this. Flickety, 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 flickety. Right. And, and what, what that's done is we're always onto something new. We're always onto something better. We're always onto something, onto something, onto something, onto something. And we you don't get a little dopamine hit. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent what it is. You know, you're getting this fix. You're a junkie essentially on this thing. Right? That's all. This yeah, oh, totally. You know, this thing is probably more addictive than any drug out there, right? There's so it is easily. There. Yeah, and you can get it no problem, and nobody thinks you, like if you were to sit there and shoot up in front of me, I'd be like, oh shit, Tony's a piece of shit. Look at him over here doing heroin. But if the Tony were to just sit here and scroll through this entire time while we're talking, right. oh yeah, totally, man. There's 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 oh, people yeah. out there that have no issue with that whatsoever. They're like, oh man, it's, yeah. just, it's just people being people, right? But we're 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 like I said, we're pre-programmed to sit here and only have two to three minutes, right? But what you miss in those two to three minutes in a clip, right? You miss everything that led up to that story, everything that led up to us bringing up this topic, everything leading up to oh X Y and Z, right? You miss well, the there's lots of picture. subtleties too, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't really watch TV. I I don't really definitely don't watch YouTube or anything like that. <laughs> it's just not for me, right? I've got like I mean, I don't as far as video games go, I haven't played video games since before treatment. And it's not because I don't want to. I just I don't know. I just don't I don't, maybe I don't need to escape anymore. Maybe that's the case because I have you know, not played, maybe that's what it is. I have not found a game and I knew I had a problem with video games, specifically with World of Warcraft, right? I didn't hey. know I didn't know like how much that actually consumed until I sat there and I thought about it, like, fuck, dude, was I really sitting there playing for seven hours with my newborn kid sitting next to me? My wife sitting over here. Like, what the fuck was my problem? Right? And yeah, was, you could have been leveling up in the real world on the auction house, man. A hundred percent. I could have been setting myself up, man. I could have been doing something where Fuck, if I would have invested some time like I did with World of Warcraft into, I don't know, bonds or stocks or some shit like that, I might be a fucker. Archery, you could have learned how to shoot bows and arrows or anything. Yeah, you know, I could have fucking ran for president or some shit like that. They'd assassinate me the first day, but that's nonetheless. You know, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's like when you sit there and you think about it, like I have not been able to play a video game since that game because that game well, was- I stopped too, yeah. Well, it's just it was a perfect game when you think about it. Like it, it was it was like that dopamine. It's a perfect game. addiction, man. Yeah, you go A to B to C. You get D. Oh fuck, I didn't get that weapon. I got to rerun this dungeon. Oh shit, I didn't get it again. Forty-seven times I've run through Karen. I haven't gotten fucking invincible yet. You know, it's like all this crazy shit, right? It's true, yeah. You know, and, and it was the perfect escape. It really was because you didn't have to think about the bullshit that you had waiting for you. And there was also the escape from like, because I mean, believe it, bullying is a huge thing too. Yeah. You know, so it was a real escape from people's reality of their lives. Like, even when you're younger, you know, you go to school, there's people are dicks, man. You know, and a lot of people put their shit on other people. Bullying is a huge thing. Did, you don't I mean you don't really get bullied in, in in a video game. You can, but then you're like, oh, what the fuck are you? Yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's just key, the keyboard warriors. You know what I mean? Nobody's nobody's getting punched in the face for some shit they say in a video game. So it gives people that invincibility too. You know, you go in there, you create this character, and even if you are like whatever you are in your real life, you can be all the things you aren't. Do you know what I mean? Like you can be something totally different. So it's the ultimate escape. From what you don't like in your life you know you can have a horrible life and just go to work come home and then you're this wondrous elven king with streets of armor flying a dragon you know what i mean yeah and it consumes it, it's consuming it really and is. It is the ultimate addiction yeah you know like because you're like oh my god it's five o'clock you're the rage at 5 30 i gotta go i can't be here with you guys i gotta go <laughs> right dude no you got a date no forget her i got a raid man i gotta kill Arthur. i miss my raid I'll lose my raid spot, and then I won't be on the raid. I got the screw. How do you know I'm gonna go? And nobody that hasn't played it doesn't get it. So that's even funnier because if somebody's watching, they're like, I don't even know what they're talking about. Anybody that's played it knows exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, dude, you got a raid spot. You got to fill that shit. You don't show up, they're gonna replace you. And then what are you gonna do? Yeah, you're gonna have to find a new guild. Man, it's crazy. But but the good thing is, going back to the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen, perspective. I got to meet some of the coolest people I've ever met in my life through that game. If that's who they were. What's that? 
if they are who they say they were. Well, the uh, the guy I'm talking about now, and he's going to actually be the uh, first question that I asked, uh, one of my best friends, Shane. Uh, I actually got to hang out with him before COVID. Him and my other, uh, one of my other best friends, Hunter, they got, they flew down and visited me for a couple of days. That's the first time we ever met in person, which is crazy when you think about it. You meet somebody online, you talk to people, and then they all come over to your house and you hang out. And you're like, oh man, I hope they don't murder me in my sleep. I hope they don't kill my wife and my kid, you know, but you, you put that faith in there. But like, I've, I've been talking to that guy since I was like 16, right? I'm, I'll be yeah. 32 next month, right? Or in August. So I, I've been talking to him for a long time. So I feel like we had built up some kind of connection, some kind of, you know, some kind of trust and all that other shit. And sometimes you just got to roll the dice on your friends and shit, right? Well, so, you know what? That, that's true. There's, there's certain, you, you, you play with people for a certain amount of time. You get to know them, man. Oh, 100%, man. And they're, they're well, like, you were lie for so long, right? You always knew when someone was like, you're like, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, you're a doctor, yeah, I get it, yeah, totally, man, yeah. You got to go do your your surgery right now, don't you? Yeah, totally. When you hear them, be like, oh, dinner's ready. Yeah, have fun with surgery, Shut buddy. Up, Mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, it it's crazy because... As, as fucked up as as fucked up as that game was, as far as like my personal life and stuff like that. Uh oh, big smoke coke. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, as fucked up as that is, man, it brought a few people into my life that are still fucking here, and they're some of the coolest people I've ever met. So that's that's the one thing I really loved from that game. Um, but 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 nonetheless, man, I don't really know what our original point was. But like I said, it's conversations. It's gonna go to these doors. We're gonna open up these doors and we're gonna walk through them, whether there's some kind of sustenance there or not. Yeah, I don't know how we got there. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I think you said you said World of Warcraft. I was like World of Warcraft. Oh my god, World of Warcraft. I totally did World of Warcraft for you. You want to talk about World of Warcraft? I love World of Warcraft. You know, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, it was it was for sure one of those one of those times where you're just like oh fuck that that happened a long time ago man that is one of those rabbit holes where you like claw your way out and you were like holy fuck I was down there yeah. <laughs> oh, like, dude I played for three months straight to get high warlord yeah I had my cousin playing when I was sleeping because you had to keep playing it. 24 7 winning 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 to earn that shit that's, that's, that's what i mean like if that's not addiction i don't know what it is you remember what server you were on spinebreaker spinebreaker okay i was i was on yeah. started i started out on the phone uh that, that's that, what i mean like we still remember this shit this is 20 years ago uh well i mean i played shit i think i i I played when they rebooted the original war, uh, not original warlords, excuse me. Uh, I, 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 t I dipped my toes back in when they brought back vanilla for the relaunch a few years back. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, I, never, I did the original, and then after we killed the Lich King in the Lich King one, the Arthas, I was like, that's it, that's over, the story's done, and I just stopped because I knew it was never going to end. Yeah. And I had already like sacrificed my entire life for however long of a period that was. And it, <laughs> dude, like you don't live your life when you're playing that shit. No, you really don't. There's no such thing. You, you go to work, you come home, really work out. 100%. And, it, and it, if anything I learned, it's just like, shit, dude. Something had a hold of me so tight. And I wasn't <sighs> aware that something had me. I always said, like, man, I don't have no fucking vices. I don't drink. I've, I've never really enjoyed drinking. And it just, I don't like the fucking taste. I was against weed all the time. And now I fucking love weed because it's a social lubricant. It does. It's like the good thing about what I assume liquor does to some people. Like Put it this way. If everybody, this is how I look at it. If everybody was addicted to marijuana, addicted, yeah. you would have a whole This podcast of was presented by the Epic Sewers Podcast Network, dinner. the home of all your pop culture podcast needs, with shows home. like Epic Tales, the Epic Tales from the Sewer, Spoiler dinner. Force Podcast, Creator con Q and A, comic watchers, that, and the What's in My Head podcast. You know what I mean? Follow us on this journey and get down and nerdy as and we bring you the no best in pop culture. Alcohol, and everybody was smoking weed instead. There'd be a whole lot more hugs going around, and a whole lot more. Oh man, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to say that to you earlier. I love you too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I said, it it takes ego out of it. What does 
alcohol do? Alcohol is liquid courage. I'm a big bad motherfucker when I'm sitting here drinking this drink. What is liquid weed? savage? Weed does everything. It peels back that layer, right? That false bravado, right? That ego takes that away. Like, man, you're just like, I'm just like Tony. Tony's just like me. Tony's just like my son. My son's just like Tony. We're all the same, right? We're at different stages of our life. We're all connected, man. It's a fucking spider web when you think about it, right? So that's what weed does for me. Whenever you use something too much, that's when it becomes an issue. Video games, alcohol, sex, anything can be a fucking vice when you think about it. Anything you can lose. Yeah, yeah. It's all intention too, right? Obviously, if whatever it is, if you're if you're doing it out of you know malice or any kind of weirdness, that's when things change, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. A lot of things are intention. What's your intentions with something, right? Yeah. If you're smoking weed because you have to, you know, like I have to do this or my skin's gonna fall off. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's different, right? You know what I mean? So. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. Now. Like I said, we've been going for an hour and a half, and I've had a blast. Oh, have we? Yeah, right. It's, it's like a fucking rabbit hole, man. You don't know what's going on cool. because we're having fun. We're, we're doing that thing that nobody does, Tony. We're talking to each other. We're talking to each other, right? So at the, at the end of every episode, man, I like to bring in the fans. Sometimes they get good questions. Sometimes they've got horrible questions. But nonetheless, they've always got questions. Now, Right on, man. Uh, You'll get my straight answer. <laughs> Beautiful. There's some people out there that I just would not answer. Or I, I won't even ask their questions, but I didn't write those ones. Why down. not ask it? Let's do a whole and let's ask all the stupid questions. And I can just be like, I no, no. Well, there was one, and I can't remember his name, but I wasn't specifically going to ask this one. But nonetheless, man, since we'll start off with a bad one, because I just I didn't think it was in poor taste. I just thought it was like, oh, this guy's just trying to troll at this point. But nonetheless, man. I love trolls. I do too, especially the, when they suck. Gotta feed the trolls. Come on, man. Uh, well, I, like I said, I, think, I can't remember this guy's name, and I didn't write it down, but I remember it specifically. I'm just remembering, like, man, this guy's a douche. But nonetheless, uh, he wanted to know when was the last time you got laid because they knew you were Eddie. Never. Never. Boom. Look at that. We already answered that question. Never. I've had that, dude. I am not a whore. Never have been. Yeah, I, I, if I met someone there, I've had this happen where you can tell the person's not interested in me, you know. And one of my buddies would be like, "Hey, let me, let me talk about some TV show," and then they're like, oh, "Hi," <laughs> like, you didn't give a shit. The last thing I would ever want to do is have someone touching me. I hate being touched. Is have someone touching me because of something so stupid and insignificant as me doing a stupid voice or saying shit in front of a camera yeah you know like i don't want someone you know unless they actually like i don't know i'm someone i like to leave in love you know what i mean if i'm not in love i don't want you touching me i don't yeah. want you i don't want you you know like i don't I, the whole thing where people are like hey baby i can't do it man. you know what i mean i need a deep connection I've always been that way. I can't, I can't just frivolously. So, so something so frivolous, I'd rather friggin' sit there and be like, I like, well, come up and girl. Oh, I did this fun, this is fun. Yeah. So no, it's never, never going to happen. Beautiful. Uh, Justin underscore doodles wants to know. And some of these ones, it, we could just skip right over if you can't remember. Because like I said, I don't like asking these things, but... No, it's okay. Ask whatever, dude. I'll give you a straight answer. A lot of a lot of people love, yep, good times. I don't know how many times people, people put that of on. Of course they do. It was yeah. horrific chiseling of my soul. Why wouldn't you love it? They, it was they, a big they, ripping a piece of my friggin' soul off and throwing it in the garbage. So he wanted to know, which line, uh, which line take is Eddie was the hardest to get right? Do you remember? Yeah, yep. We went over this. Yep, good time. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I mean, was it the hardest to, hardest to do, though? I know that was the most mm-hmm. soul crushing. Was there one you just couldn't and do? It took me like 300 times. <laughs> I think they were. Like, who, the, they? There's nothing more hard than that. Okay. <laughs> Especially something so simple. Got you. Other, like, that, that is the only one that sticks out, man. Like, other, like that, I mean, most of the time it wasn't like that one was like. You're just not getting it, right? Like there was lots of times where I tasted blood in my vocal cords after doing editing, I'm glad screaming you, for hours. I'm glad you brought that up because there's a few questions about that. 
Um, yeah. Just taste and blood, but what you did and shit like that. Fuller, uh, Felly Raptor wants to know. Um, I the answer is going to be yes, but do people still ask you to do Eddie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this all is all the time. One of my I don't I ahead. don't really do it. This is how I look at it. So it's like so I did I did I did the cartoon right. Yeah. So like, so say you're a carpenter. Okay. Hey man, I saw this awesome ass friggin' birdhouse you built. Build me a birdhouse. No, 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 right now, just build one. I saw it, it was great. No, no, really, can you just, just build the birdhouse for me? No, for free, just right now. While I'm asking you, please just, just build the birdhouse. It's the same thing, right? 100%. Now, there are, yes. there are specific jobs because during the day I cook for a living, right? So I, yeah. I only do it because they keep paying me, the checks keep clearing, so I keep showing up, right? It's not that I, I'm good at my job. I enjoy cooking. But what I enjoy cooking, I enjoy cooking like I enjoy talking. I like having people over my house, cooking the food yeah. I want to cook. Because it's it's more of a connection than just me giving you food. Like we were talking about earlier, we don't have enough campfires. We don't have enough people breaking bread over these campfires. Yeah. This is what civilization was built on. Us bringing my, my food, you bringing your food, you telling me yeah. what makes you different where you come from, and I'm telling you what makes me different from where I come from. We have a common yeah. bond. Here's the difference. If you had me over for dinner and you were cooking for me and you guys wanted me to do the voice, I fucking do it. <laughs> That's the difference, right? Message me on uh, messaging me on some Facebook and being like, "Do the voice, do it. <laughs> you did the voice. Why won't you do it for me? I want you to say this, 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 and this right now. Do it." <laughs> Big difference. A hundred percent. Yeah. But like I said, I like that connection, even though I'm getting paid to do something, I do it because they pay me to do it. If I'm, yeah. like this one, that's why I agree with you. If I'm cooking, I want to cook for people. I've done it for people randomly asked, but it depends on the situation, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. everything, yeah. everything's flowing, right? Some days I'm like, no, fuck off. Like I don't, I'm just got off work. Like I don't want to do the voice right now. Yeah. I'm not going to scream on a bus. Right. Other times I've gotten messages people like, hey, dude, my, my kid's birthday is tomorrow and they love that and they could you do the voice for them? And if I'm not doing something and I'm, you know what I mean, I got time, then yeah, I'll throw it out. It takes me two seconds, right? Yeah, happy birthday, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, but it's all like, it's all here or there. It depends whether I have time or not and it depends on the situation, really. Yeah, really. You got to be in the right. right space for it. You know, you're not a fucking. Yeah, person. whatever it is. You know, like sometimes I'm busy. I, I work lots, man. Like when I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm not working, I don't, I'm off. Like, enjoying yeah. my life you know like that's the way it should be uh, right? yeah um this guy's got one or girl excuse me i don't want to misgender anybody right here um, how dare you yeah that was me doing air quotes too with that that how uh, dare you miss i'm i identify as a unicorn yeah what kind of unicorn yeah i don't know this unicorn I actually had the government call me and ask me my gender and i was like really really yeah and i was like okay i was like uh put me down as a unicorn What'd they say? So yeah, I'm actually down as a unicorn. So I'm, I'm a unicorn. <laughs> That's why I released that song called Unicorn because I'm, I'm a unicorn. I was wondering why you released that one. And, and we got yeah, we, unicorn. Some, uh, we got some fans yeah. over of your music and stuff. The, questions. the government literally asked me my gender. It's like, like, dude, you called me. Like, I don't know. I guess it's a thing now. You can't assume, right? So right. I mean, the guy was like, oh, just tell me. Like, I have to ask you. I was like, all right, write me down as a unicorn. So that, boom, I'm a unicorn. You should have told him to FaceTime and you pull your dick out. And you're like, this is the gender I am. Look at it. Yeah. See, that's a little bit on the side of uh, maybe like assaulting people nah. with your yeah. genitals. Or random dick pics. It's kind of like, you know, hey, how you doing? My name's Bob. Like <laughs> picture. Like, come on, dude. That's, that's fucked up. That is some fucked up shit. People that just randomly send genital dick pictures, like, Hello, you got some problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful time to be alive. Nothing but dick it is. And angry people on the internet. Chrono Commander wants to know. Uh, how does it feel to have been a crucial part of so many childhoods? Good. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so here, here, here's how I look at it. I mean, the show and everything aside, I, whatever. It's, I, I was lucky enough to just do it. I didn't really, I don't even, like I said, I was so big. I don't know. And Danny did it. He got what he needed his day, right? The part that I do like is, um, like, so I'll get messages from people, you know, if I have time, I'll answer. 
I like the part where if, I, if there's anything I can do that takes me very minimal time just to make somebody's day better, mm-hmm. I like that, you know, and I will do it, you know, and the fact that I know that there's some point in my life where I've had the opportunity to make a bunch of people's day better just by something simple for me or whatever it was or anything that I did to make someone's day better, that's the part that makes me happy is that if there was any time where I made even just a little smile for somebody, that makes it worth it. That's why you're a fucking you know I mean? coach. A hundred percent. Yeah. Man. So many people love you, man. Um, our underscore bathroom eight three one one wants to know. Um, <laughs> underscore bathroom. Yeah, there was eight thousand three hundred and ten of them before they got to his. But uh, how? That's do you, awesome. Do you still get recognized in real life? If so, how often does it happen? Zero. Beautiful. That's the best way to go. Under the radar type of thing. Get in, get out type of thing. Cloak and daggers. Yeah, I don't think I look too much like Eddie. You would be surprised because that was something. Oh, maybe I do. Everybody said I knew exactly who Eddie was. I knew exactly who Double D was. And I know exactly who Ed was. Well, yeah, I guess the three of us can. I'm just saying it's not something that I've ever been recognized for, ever. Beautiful. Um, Yeah. Zalo wants to know. um, And this one was this one was leading up to it's like, you know, it was the same kind of thing. Like, how does it feel to be a crucial part of so many childhoods? But he, he, he expounded a little bit past that. And he was like, what were some of your favorite cartoons or shows you enjoyed growing up that you would have had like that same kind of connection with that when fans reach out to you, you'd be like, oh, shit, you were such a huge part of my childhood. What was a huge part of your childhood movies or television shows for you growing up? Oh, I, I like Looney Tunes. Yeah. Who's your favorite? Oh, yeah, dude, I'm a aunt. I'm a Looney Tunes, all of it. Yeah, yeah, all all Looney Tunes, Smash Bang, Crash, Wally Coyote. You know where they didn't have to have the disclaimer. They're like, don't strap yourself to a pile of TNT and blow yourself up because you could fucking die. Yeah, you know. Um, I don't know. I didn't really watch when I mean growing up. We didn't really watch too much TV. We had like Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, you know, and I didn't really watch like TV shows. I don't like commercials, so like I watch movies and stuff. But, like, I mean, we were outside yeah. growing up. You know, like, we got up, we went outside, we played in the woods, we went miles and miles away. Like, we go to the store when we were young and buy cigarettes for the grandmother. And, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, they're for my grandma. And then, you know, she's like, if there's a problem, you have your note. And they could call your grandma. And she'd be like, yeah, give them the Rothman. You know, like, it was a different childhood completely, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm actually happy I grew up without cell phones and social media. Like, Dude, if I grew up with social media, holy fuck. I you couldn't even imagine some of the shit that I did being put on social media. Yeah. Like, really? Like, it's a horrible way to wait to, to have your life knowing that you can go out and have a good time and be a little bit crazy and then have that shit. I mean, I probably would have gone viral. <laughs> but still, you know what I mean? Like, we did a lot of shit, man, that, you know, if you wouldn't have been on the internet, we'd have been in trouble. A hundred percent, man. It's a different time yeah. to be growing up. Uh, Mr. Buck 189 wants to know, oh, man. what was the most devious thing the gang did in your opinion? I know that's going to be a stretch. The gang, they're talking about the Ed boys. What was the most devious Media. thing that you can remember? Yeah. Like in the show? Yeah. I figured as much. Um, Remember that buddy I was telling you about that I met in World of Warcraft? He had a question. Sorry. Uh, I didn't answer that one. Trying to remember something from fucking over 20 years ago from when it started is almost impossible. I, I, I have no idea. Sorry. Um, I think you've already really answered this, though. But like I said, it's my best buddy. One of my best buddies, Shane, guy I met from World of Warcraft. He wanted to know. Uh, he's like, how come you tend to distance yourself from media and interviews? Pretty much. Fuck do I care? So, all it is is time out of my life yes. you know like i what, what am i going to interview for right yeah. this is some i mean i'm doing it with you because you're cool right yeah. matt and sam did the thing you were super cool when we did the interview i've talked to you a few times you asked me to do one i said you know what i did one with matt and sam i'm gonna do this this is like it yeah for me and i don't give a fuck honestly i just don't care like, who oh, don't you want? No, I don't care. Like, I don't care. I don't want to answer people's questions. I've got absolutely nothing to gain or lose from it at all. Um, I tend to not have good answers, and I tend to tell people to fuck off. 
So <laughs> one of those things, right? You know what I mean? You know, and, and like I said, you're cool. We have conversation. We can bounce. You know what I mean? You're not going to get all upset if I say fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? <gasps> so he's like, oh, 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 my God. You can't put that on television, man. But no, I've just, I've never, I don't, I don't know. I don't get the whole fan thing. Like, I don't do autographs. I never ask for an autograph. If I met, it doesn't matter who it is. Everybody's fucked, dude. We're all fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't think I'm special to do interviews or media. I don't want to, you know, and I just, I don't know. I've just never done it. And I just don't care. Beautiful. Like I said, man, that's what I admire about you and admire about Danny. You guys only do what you want to do. And that's what everybody yeah. should have to be. Um, and I, I honestly, the only reason I'm even doing this one is because you're cool. I said I would, and I figured I'll do one in my life, and that'll be that. Fuck it. Beautiful. Well, I'm glad you chose me to do it, man. You, I got to pop Tony's cherry twice. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Can't catch you twice, man. <laughs> Can't uh, catch you twice. Kay Froman wants to know how, how did you come up with that distinctly crusty voice that Eddie has? Uh, Danny. Beautiful. Um, Danny worked it out of me, man. He obviously knew, and we kind of just went with it, and it evolved, and it ended up being that. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. On a side no note, wants to know, what kind of music slash bands do you like? Everything. Beautiful. What is, what's Literally, your Literally every genre and every type of music from classical to dean martin to country to edm to rock to death metal cannibal corpse slayer down to like backstreet boys and some k-pop like britney spears i literally like all music for what it is man bg's it all has its place, right? I find, um, I don't get stuck in a song. If I like the song, I like the song. It's yeah. got a cool beat or whatever it is. Like my playlist literally has like Beethoven, Bach, bunch of other classical. I've got country on there and like you name it. Mostly I make electronic music. I don't know why. Um, I don't, I'm not really, like I, when, I, when I go to make a song, I'm not, thinking of a genre like i'm working on a country song right now um but i don't think it's going to be like super country just because i'm a more of a fusion like however it ends up being is what it's going to end up being yeah. i don't really give a fuck i'm making it like because i like it and then if somebody else likes it then we'll cool and if they don't i don't care yeah you know what i mean like i'm not making it so that somebody else can go i approve of you right <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, from somebody don't care. Else. You know, don't care. Oh, you don't like it? Oh, this is terrible. I liked it, so that's cool, right? If you like it, cool. If you don't, that's cool. Don't care, right? You know, I mean, I just like enjoy doing it. But as far as music goes, I love it all, man. And I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Have you, have you always been like that as far as music goes, or is it just something later in life? Yeah, I don't know. I've always liked all music. I mean, I went through my phases where I listened to like more of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I mean, there's been plenty of times where I've had like Cannibal Corpse, Butchered at Birth come on, followed by Pickaxe Murders, and then like for release, right afterwards. And then you got like dun, 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 dun. driving down, you got Cannibal Corpse, and then Beethoven Mock, right? And then you got bye, 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 bye. Like, I don't care, right? I don't need, like, and if someone's like, you uh, you can't believe you're listening to it, I don't give a shit if you don't, like, fuck off. You know, I don't care. It, it's something I like that, Justin Timberlake. I like him. I like I, I, I like some JT man. Um, big yeah, fan. that's what I mean. And I like some Britney Spears. I like some Justin Bieber. If you don't like him, cool. Don't care. <laughs> it's something that's like, I think, I, you know, I think that's a life skill more people that I think would benefit the world more. Giving less fucks of what others think and just doing what makes you happy and what you want to do. You know, it, it's it's funny without having to worry about the approval of others. It, it's funny you say that because I just had this talk with my son a couple days ago, and <clears throat> I'll show you. I can't remember if I had that painting. Right yeah, I'm, I'm. I'll be up for dinner. They're making. I got it. I'm at my parents' house 
on yeah. vacation with my kids and we were making barbecued hamburgers. Ooh, that sounds delightful, man. And yeah, fresh homemade barbecued hamburgers. That was my dad. Yeah. We at my daddy's house on vacation. We went to the <laughs> beach all day. It was really nice. I, I don't know if Sorry. I No, you're fine. I don't know if I should I don't know if that painting was in the back when we did our last talk and shit, right? But I, I had this okay. talk with my son, validation from others, right? You don't fucking yeah. When I was younger, I couldn't like colors. Like I couldn't like pink and blue and purple and, and all these wild mm. colors. As a boy back then, you either liked red, green, blue, that type of shit. You got yeah. looked differently if you wore something yellow or you wore something pink or you wore something purple. Oh, he must like oh. women or oh, she must like women. You know, you got that that weird talk if you like something other than the norm, right? So I had <clears throat> I had this talk with my son that just don't fucking matter. If you like whatever you want to like. You want to like, yeah. like a boy. You want to like girls, like girls. If you want to wear fucking pink and purple, let me know because I'll wear pink and purple too because I like those. I wear pink all the time. I love it. 100%, man. Um, I've had people ask me if I was gay, actually. Yeah, I, I, I've yeah. Been I'm like, dude, if I was gay, there would be no doubt in your mind at all. Oh. I would be like, I would be like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there would be no doubt. Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely wouldn't care if you thought I was or wasn't. Yeah, you know, it, it's that you, you know? gotta do what you do, and it's funny we're talking about yeah. colors because hillbilly pow pow, one of my favorite fucking handles right now. Uh, he wants to know what's your favorite color. All of them. All of them, beautiful. I, I say that to my kids. They're like, no, you can't like them all. You have to pick one. I'm like, no. <laughs> if you want to pick a favorite color, you go right ahead. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want and pick them all because I like them all. And that's that. It's great being the parent, right? That's <laughs> great. You know, just, doing the, just doing whatever you want thing is very relieving because I, I, I genuinely like them all. I can't pick one. Yeah. They're all so different and fascinating. 100 percent, man and then when you mix them together they make different ones man <laughs> right uh s-n-e-s S -N -E -S forever wants to know did edit and eddie's soundtrack have any influence when you started making music no beautiful um has music always been a goal for you same person has music always been a goal for you or did other works you did inspire you to start uh and then he says yep good times um, I've always liked music. I've been like a huge music junkie. I'm a bass head. Like I had ridiculous bass. Yeah. Like, like those ridiculous ones where I drive through a parking lot and everybody's car alarm going off, you know, like at the stoplight music cranked and it's not my car that's rattling. It's like every other car stop there is rattling that loud. Yeah. Ridiculous. I've always loved music. I always wanted to make music. It's just in, it use a lot harder to get into the production stuff a lot more expensive. And I was already working and doing other stuff and living. It just wasn't a, a thing. But once I could get my own software, like I went and got my own software and taught myself and blah, blah, blah. It's always something I've been interested in. And I always have like tunes and stuff going on. So I just kind of taught myself and dabbled with it. It's a great hobby. And, you know, it's like, it's another one of those things. Like I don't play video games. Now, if I get some personal time, I'll go and I'll play it. I like to make the sounds, right? Like I don't sample or anything. I actually have like Serum and a couple other like wavetable programs and stuff where I actually make all the sounds. So when you listen to my music, it's all original sounds. Yeah. So like I made all those sounds from scratch. Like those are my sounds. I didn't steal them. I didn't sample them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I made all of them. So it's, it's, it's all that kind of stuff. I like to sit there and tinker with down, down, and, and then when it finally hits that perfect thing when you heard you know and then you make i don't know i just like making it and then like if you get subs like my music is totally different if you have six subs yeah there's bass in there that you won't hear on a normal stereo you need to have a sub woofer that shakes you and you're missing a whole layer of the song if you don't gotcha right beautiful. like if yeah beautiful yeah i did like it is y'all <laughs> Um, Sky the lawyer wants to know what do you think Eddie would be up to today? Probably be like selling weed or something. Who knows, man? I don't know. Dark Definitely up. still be scamming yeah, business something. Uh, maybe uh, politician. Oh, I mean, it's a great ripping time to everybody politician. off that way. 
Not the politicians lie or scam or anything. You're you're gonna make some nerd in this basement just scream at the fucking the computer right now. Eddie wouldn't be a politician. Yes, he would. Shut up. You're a loser. Uh, Darko Leonhardt. <laughs> uh, last I heard, you walked away from the voiceover game. Do you ever think about going back at all? Hmm. Let me know. <laughs> Ed Boy seven 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 wants to know. We've already answered this one, but how come you are not on Cameo or Instagram? Do you still take requests for Eddie voicemail audio clips? I'm pretty sure we've already answered that one. Um, so like the Cameo thing, Instagram, I don't have Instagram or Twatter or any of that crap. It just controls your life with more bleepity blops on your phone. Uh, the Cameo one, I don't have it because for me to like want to do it, to even bother taking time out of my personal time, I would have to ask for such a ridiculous amount of money yeah. for it to, for me to want to sacrifice my personal time to be at beck and call of said app mm -hmm. that it, I wouldn't feel right even asking that amount. So I just don't yeah. do it. Beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like I said, I like I like the way you have morals and you stick by your laurels, man. Yeah, I just I just I just I'd rather not be at the beck and call of anything, really. Yeah, you never want to be. That's why everybody wants to be their own boss. Nobody wants to be beholden to anybody. Nobody wants to be shackled. I don't want to. I don't want to be out. Dance, you know, having a great time and have my phone go beep beep beep. Hold on, I have to do that. Yeah. Right. Uh, Fresh teaching wants to know why did you quit voice acting after the show ended. You want the real answer? 100%. Okay. So, um, and I just want to put this out there that this has nothing to do with Danny. Okay. Danny's awesome. Danny's just trying to make a show. Okay. So we did Ed, Ed, and Eddie for the longest time. And uh, we didn't get made, we didn't make that much money doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wanted to raise. Yeah. After eight years or whatever it is, nine years, it's a good show. Number one show, you get a raise. Right? Yeah. How things work in life. You work for somebody for a long time, you get a raise. Yeah. So I wanted a raise. It wasn't even a ridiculous raise. Okay. So the production company that was dealing with it came back with a counter offer of, we'll blacklist you. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it was a, it was a very reasonable counter offer, right? Yeah. I would like a raise instead of coming back with a different number or something. It was, you'll never work in this town again. As an answer, it was a threatened to blacklist me. So I said, okay, well, I blacklist you and I quit. And I'm not doing this anymore because fuck you. Yeah. I've done this my whole life. And your fucking response to something like this is, well, blacklist you? Like, fucking, sucking gag on it. Like, I'm not even going to deal with you anymore. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Right? You come back with a response like that, it just, Rub me the wrong way. You know, like, I've known you guys my whole life since I was little. And that's your response to we would like a raise, you know? And then it was hard because nobody else would get behind it because there's this, oh, we want to keep licking the friggin' proverbial kid of our overlords ripping us off for voice acting in Vancouver, right? Where I was like, you guys can all just straight up go fuck yourselves. And I, uh, I, I literally sold my place and moved away and signed up for college and got a different career where I could just go work and I, you know what I mean? And it would be that. And I'm not going to be somebody's little fucking fuck doll that they're going to think they can just put their thumb on me and threaten me with my job because I asked for a raise. So I quit. And I told them all to get fucked. Well, I'm glad you did that, man. So that is why. Good. Right? And like I said, this has nothing to do with Danny. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, I'm not even going to name names because they still need to go there. Okay. Yeah. 100%. Right? But they know who they are and they know they suck dick sideways through straws. So I basically took their response and said, fuck you all then. Peace out. I don't need to be some monkey bitch to your fucking industry. It's a horrible, horrible industry. Yeah. You know, like I won't even get into that, but like, you can ask any young kind of people that did it their whole life. It's it's kind of twisted. I mean, it's, it's fine for some people, but for the most part, it's a pretty twisted place to be. Well, it, it came up with, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you remember, uh, Aaron. It's not, it's not reality. You know what I mean? Like the whole thing is not it's a the reality of the world. Yeah. 
know, there's a lot of bullshit, a lot of fake, a lot of, hey, man, yeah, yeah, I'm writing this script, TG story, be Like, I don't do the fake thing. I'm like, you don't have a script. There's no movie. Like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And it was such bullshit. And I just was over it, you know? And I had my, like, you know what I mean? Like I said, the soul sucking industry, man. And it just wasn't for me anymore. Especially after the whole being threatened to be blacklisted thing. Like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, how about this? I quit. See ya. Yeah, man. Well, from Tony and from Julian at the What's in My Head podcast, go fuck yourself. Um, but uh, when, I, when I talk to, when I talk to Aaron, throw a big fat through throw, there. Throw a straw. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I talked to Aaron, she said the same thing that she had an executive try to do this, essentially the same thing. Uh, she played yeah. Matt in May Canker and, and same thing. She wouldn't bring up any names, but fuck those people. Um, yeah. Uh, Emerald Ace wants to know, aside from Edit A, what was your favorite show to work on? The last one? <laughs> um, no, I had some fun on a, on a few of them. I liked, I liked doing acting stuff like in front of the camera. Um, the Odyssey was fun when yeah. I did that TV show. X-Files was cool. David Duchovny was really cool to talk to. We got an X-Files um, too. I was on X-Files twice, yeah. Once with long hair and once with shorter. Um, I don't know, man. I had a lot of fun doing a lot of things. Um, I wouldn't classify Ed, Ed, and Eddie as fun. Yeah. You know? Um, the only thing that I take away from Ed, Ed, and Eddie is, uh, you know, Danny is an artist. Like an actual artist. Yeah. And he had a vision. And I'm glad that I got to partake in helping him make his, his vision. You know what I mean? So that was all Danny. So, I mean, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, was, I was glad to be a part of something that, that was that big, but I wouldn't classify it as fun. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. It uh, was work. Yeah. Uh, Conquer fan 420. We love 420. Um, he wants to know, or she, excuse me, uh, what was your favorite recording memory? And he didn't say any specific show, but do you have a favorite recording memory? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. A lot of the anime stuff was fun because you got to really just go fucking crazy. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. A lot of it was fun. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, yeah. I'm going to butcher this name. Ryusha Name wants to know, what's your favorite Pokemon? I hate Pokemon. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't stand Pokemon. My son keeps talking about Pokemon, Pokemon. I'm like, dude, do you realize those are demons? <laughs> like, if you actually look up why and where Pokemon came from, like, it's not cool, man. You guys are so many demons from the outer planes, man. You're giving them your soul, man. Sorry. Note AA yeah. wants to know, have you considered adding your own vocals for your original music? And he says, I love it, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I put, put done lots with my vocals in it. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, there's, there's, some, there's lots of vocals. And I use my... I actually use my voice to make some of the sounds he still know because he didn't sound like him. What I guess he was... Yeah, I, I actually have a lot of songs written where I have my vocals. It's just a matter of making them. I've got lots. Like, I've got a lot of shit written that, yeah. like, rock and country and big band music and swingers. Like, like there are, like, all kinds of shit that I have lyrics for. It's just a matter of making it all, having time for it. But I, I definitely will be putting lots of lyrics on stuff in the future for sure. Okay, and then, um, no, uh, I already asked that one. The Golden Turtle wants to know, what do you do on a rainy day? What do I do on a rainy day? Yeah, what do you like to do on a well, rainy day? Go stand in it? <laughs> I love rain, dude. Go friggin' go for a walk, go play in it, run around naked in the field. I don't know, man, whatever. Whatever comes up, rain ain't stopping shit. <laughs> Beautiful party never stops. Red Antonio two five six wants to know: Did you ever meet any of the other Cartoon Network creators or voice actors that aired around the same time you did? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe not. <laughs> did you ever watch uh, his other question? Did you? What were your thoughts on some of the Cartoon Network other Cartoon Network shows? Did you ever watch any of those or no? We don't have Cartoon Network in Canada. No. Okay. Um, nope. Wild. Looney Tunes. Uh, Another user, 007 underscore yep, uh, he wants to know, or she, um, 
what modern shows, and you already kind of answered this one, what modern shows do you think would be worthy of having a crossover with the Ed universe? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Black Rose Valkyrie wants to know, I told you this X-Files question coming up. What was your experience like on X-Files? You said David Duchovny was pretty cool, man, but you got any, uh, got any cool memories from working on the X-Files? No, it was just a great, honestly, it was just a great show to work on. I yeah. don't know, it was just the cast was great. I love that. It was always it was always interesting stuff, you know. Like I got killed in one, and I was like drunk in the other one. It was always like I don't know. It was just really cool, you know what I mean? Like so, it's, and even when you're working on, it, it's like it's oh, X Files, like X Files, you know what I mean? So I was just pumped to be there. Yeah, that was, know, it was, just, it, was it was just cool, huh? That was such a fun show, and that one, the opening for that one, and the opening for Unsolved Mystery scared the fuck out of me such at such a young age, yeah. you know that. Totally. that OG yeah. or Pajama Sam wants to know. Uh, you had mentioned a couple of the softwares you were using, but what software slash hardware do you use to make music? If it's a secret, I understand. Uh, no, I use uh, Ableton 11 mm -hmm. and Serum and like all the wave tables and stuff in Ableton. And I have Kick 2 drum synthesizer. And I have, uh, there's a whole bunch of different like, plugins and stuff that you can use yeah and i have uh like a roland voice modulator and then the computer i built i got an alienware computer that i built just based specifically for music really fast processor and lots of ram and that's all i use it for beautiful um pastel yeah. underscore stars underscore 18 uh how would eddie do meeting any cryptid or other worldly beings with demonic powers seems spooky a little bit what what would eddie <laughs> what would eddie what how how would eddie do meeting any cryptid bigfoot locky you know shit like that the chupacabra El chupacabra oh uh, he monetize him <laughs> kidding me he tricked him into having him have some kind of exhibit or something so he could get some more fucking crack i mean jawbreakers beautiful uh they asked if you like those uh well, Manoramus wants. Well, Manoramus wants to know. Uh, I don't know this song, and can you sing "Money, Money" by ABBA? No. Yeah, me neither. I don't even know what fucking song that is. I, I'm thinking about what it is. Uh, I know some ABBA songs, but I can't think of it. So no. Yeah, I can't really think of that. I don't know what that one is. No. Baku Kojin wants to know. Any fun Inuyasha experiences? I know you said some anime was pretty fun. Do you have any? Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, on Inuyasha, Sam was my boyfriend or something. He's like my gay lover or something on Inuyasha. Who slipped who tongue first? You? Or I'm not sure. I think I was the man. Yeah. And then, then his character. I, I think that was Inuyasha. It might have been another one, but I know there was one of them where Sam was like my boyfriend, my gay lover. Yeah. Nice. I don't remember, man. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Jojo Star Fox wants to know, what's the dumbest thing you stole as a child? I didn't steal, man. Beautiful. Hey, uh, I didn't steal shit, man. Get your freaking hands cut off to that shit. Somebody will, somebody will take your stuff, man. We got a couple more here. Uh, Real Brian Trod wants to know, do you remember... Uh, your other roles, namely from Mega Man NT, My Little Pony Tales, and other things. What are your thoughts on them? You remember anything from Mega Man or My Little Pony? Mega Man was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, My Little Pony, it was so long ago. I don't know. Uh, Mega Man was a lot of fun. I liked uh, this show called What About Meanie, mm -hmm. where I was like Brock Wickersham and he had Bruce Fish and Lisp. That was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, they were all, I had a lot of fun doing everything that I did, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Eddie Fragnos wants to know, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Uh, where Darth Vader gets created. No! <laughs> the friggin' epic lightsaber battle with Obi-Wan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, voice Acticon wants to know, were there any personality traits of Eddie that you absolutely hated? Nautical Menace wants to... 
Not gonna ask that one. Suck a dime. Oh. No. What would Eddie do if he? What would Eddie do if he owned a bank? It's the same as the banks do. Steal everybody's money. <laughs> Forty-seven. Same under, thing. Forty-seven under course cartoon wants to know. Was there any line in Ed, Ed and Eddie that you objected to saying? All of them. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, dude. I just, I just did. <laughs> Noah David Noah David Burrs wants to know would you ever do a Scooby Doo slash Ed and Eddie crossover? Dude, I probably I don't know. Like yeah, sure. Maybe. Do I get to do Scooby? I don't know. What's your Scooby sound like? <laughs> oh jeez, Scoop. I don't know. <laughs> Man, can somebody else do any for me? And I'll just do the... Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> got my right now. Um, I don't know. Probably you not. You had mentioned earlier that you had a few times with Eddie, you had gotten some blood in your throat. What did you do for voice recovery? And that's from Heck Retweet. Lots and lots of drugs. <laughs> Uh, lots of lots of like like smoke lots of weed and I did lots of other bad things and I partied lots and I lived a lot and I did lots of stuff after that made me forget about it man two more uh and they're both from Alex one's Alex and one's Alex M so uh Alex wants to know would you do music scores for tv shows or movies I don't know. I mean, if they wanted to use what I had, sure. I don't, I, I kind of have like a career where I have a job. You know, I love it. I love my yeah. job and I love my days off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and like my days off, I don't um, really do work. I, you know, if I'm making music, it's because it's what I want to do as a yeah. hobby, you know, but I mean, days off are for living and I, I don't know if I'd really want to have anything else like that where I had a deadline or had to do you know, like another job job whereas if they used what I had sure great or you can use my music stuff but like as far as getting another career you know it wouldn't happen Beautiful. unless they're going to pay me a whole lot more than my current career and give me a long-term contract and a pension then maybe I should consider it hey man maybe maybe somebody's out there listening um, maybe yeah <laughs> Alex M wants to know you already answered this one, but nonetheless, man, where's the weirdest place someone realized you were Eddie? You said it was zero. But nonetheless, man, uh, like I said, I didn't know what I was going to expect from this episode. I'm super happy that you reached out to me and said, hey, you want to do a solo episode? Fuck yeah. I've yeah, I figured, I figured we get one of each done, right? One and done. So I've never done one. Here's the one. Now we're done. None left. This is it. <laughs> Well, man, I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you chose at least this podcast to do it. You've been a fun. Well, you're person. cool, man. Thanks, I appreciate that, man. You are too. You've been a fun person to talk to, man. I told you in the hey, last buddy. episode, I absolutely love what you did, man. I'm so glad that that you're happy in the stage of your life that you finally found. Oh, dude, I've never been happier yet. That, that's beautiful. I don't want to say I don't want to put words in your mouth and say you found a purpose or you found something that's keeping you going. You, you, you seem like you're in a good place. And, and that's anything. I life, man. That, that's, and that's beautiful, man. It really is. If, if <laughs> anybody takes anything from this episode, do what you want, right? Don't do what you don't have to do. Do what you want, and it always gets better. Yeah, man, it always gets better. I mean, that's been Tony. This has been Julian. This has been what's in the head my well, – fuck, man, what's in my head podcast. Yeah, man, and here was another piece of your childhood. Thank you guys so much. Have a day. Peace.